Norm, please. Mrs. Vickers here. This is Perry. Here. This is Brown here. This is Norman in here. This is Wolf here. Thank you. And, um, we are not having a closed session this evening, so we'll move to um, standing for a pledge, please. Flex to the back, left hand corner. Ready to begin? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Like to 
get sure. out of there. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I'm from the audience. Thank you. I just wanted to take the opportunity to, to thank the members of the board and Dr. Malloy, Dr. Dr. Depot, and uh, everybody else uh, for welcoming me, welcoming me this uh, this first week or so that I've been been here. Uh, it's been I feel so welcomed already. Uh, I'm excited for the opportunity to serve uh, the Laguna Beach community. It's been really exciting so far. Um, so just thank you again, and I'm really looking forward to when the year started and seeing the kids. I've already had an opportunity to go out to the, to the summer schools and check out all the classrooms. So a lot of exciting things going on, and uh, just excited to be here. So thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Welcome to your family. <laughs> You'll find it even more exciting once the school year gets started. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor. 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 I just um, had one comment. I'm uh, appreciative of all the detail in the minutes for June 19th, our special meeting that we had at the library uh, concerning the proposed calendar change, and that the opinions shared by folks were really, really represented in detail. And if you were one of those folks and you look at the minutes, I think you'll be appreciative that your comments were reflected as presented. Um, that's my only comment. Um, so, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries my vote. Uh, we have information items this evening. Our first item is item 13, presentation by the Laguna Beach Chief of Police regarding memorandum of understanding between the Laguna Beach Police Department and the Laguna Beach Unified School District to provide a school resource officer. Mr. Dixon, are you presenting? Yes, so no, thank you for the figures. We've worked with um, Police Chief Barron on her staff, our staff, and County Legal Council to review this memorandum of understanding to develop a school resource officer program through the Laguna Beach Police Department. And I'm going to turn it over to Chief Barron to kind of give an overview of what this program will look like. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, once again, my name is Laura Barron Ellen, Police Chief for the City of Laguna Beach, and I'm really happy to be here today. And I hope to get your support in furthering our partnership through a dedicated resource, school resource officer for the Laguna Beach Unified School District. So I put together some talking points today in hopes, as you said, to kind of clarify the position of what that would mean to the school district. So as you know, a dedicated SRO on school campuses is a best practice when it comes to school safety and increasing the school police partnership. Having a dedicated SRO provides ongoing consistent relationship with the students and faculty that will enhance school security as well as focus on early education, prevention, and intervention on an ongoing basis. The goal of the SRO is to reduce crimes committed by juveniles and young adults through our mentorship and education. And having an SRO that grows up with the student body further breaks down those walls and opens up the opportunity for informal counseling to occur. The goal of the SRO is also to build relationships with the school administration and teachers, working together as a team to identify and address concerns before they grow, which builds a stronger school and city community. Since a dedicated SRO would be a new program, in the school district, we have worked with the superintendent, S. Staten, and his team to outline an operational memorandum of understanding that formalizes this relationship between both parties. Sharing the same vision made it very easy for us to come up and outline um, mission goals and objectives. And in short, the goals and objectives include, but are not limited to, reducing and preventing acts of violence, maintaining a safe and secure environment for learning, reduce criminal offenses committed by our youth, establish a rapport with the student population, establish rapport with parents and faculty and administration. And additional duties and functions will also include, and it'll be ongoing as we move through it, if it's approved, so that they'll attend sporting events and functions as requested by the school district, provide instructions related to cyber and anti-bullying, drug and alcohol abuse, social media responsibility, school and personal safety, and any other relevant topics. And really what we want, we want the SRO to have fun want them to engage the students and be their cheerleader and mentor and guide the students as they navigate through life. And I truly believe that a, point of, a consistent point of contact throughout the school year will enhance school safety while providing a positive role model, partner, and liaison in problem solving. It's a win-win for both the school district as well as the police department. 
So thank you, and I welcome your questions and comments. Okay. Is there any public comment before we start? Oh, we're right here. Okay. Bruce Moore? Yeah. Good evening. Yeah, hi, my name is uh, Bruce Moore. I was driving out of town this morning. I heard on the radio they're going to put an SRO in the schools. I thought that's a really bad idea. Um, it sounds like a knee jerk reaction to recent school shootings. Um, and it's just a bad, bad idea. Let me just talk about the three problems. Uh, you're not going to be any safer. There was a school resource officer on campus in Florida during the shooting. There was two Las Vegas Metro officers present in the building in the Las Vegas shooting. Uh, neither engaged. It's just fantasy to think you're going to be any safer. Um, if you're hiring one officer, you can only get one school. So one out of four is not going to be at the other three schools if something happens. But this is such a great idea to hire four. Um, what it's going to do is criminalize more conduct. And when there's no shootings at the school, the officer has to do something else. And so what he's going to focus on is drug crimes and assaults, stolen backpacks. And so you're going to have more families in the district in the criminal justice system is all you're going to do. Let me give you a concrete example. A couple years ago, one athlete assaulted another uh, in warm-ups, and the coach found out about it. He interviewed the participants, he interviewed some witnesses, and he benched a couple of players for a couple of games. And he took care of it. Next year, if you have an SRO, he's going to come over and take a report, and it's going to go to the prosecutor's office, and it's going to get filed, and you can have that family, both of them, in the criminal justice system for no good reason. I mean, that, that incident was handled just fine when it happened a year or two ago. And now you're going to criminalize all kinds of drug cases, assaults, vandalisms. Those things that occur on campus are not going to go into the court system. And so you think you're creating safety, you're not. What you're going to do is criminalize a lot of conduct that just could be handled locally. And you're uh, just creating a big, fat pension and costly uh, salary for no good reason. Uh, I guess those are my comments. Um, you also don't have any MOU about work and drug cases, informants, confidential informants, the use of them, the use of use, uh, how that would be handled. That's a very sticky area in the uh, law enforcement world. It's not mentioned anywhere in here. Um, I just think you're jumping into something you don't know what. So you might think about it. Thank you. So any I just I work at a high school in Santa Ana and we have an SRO. You say your name, please. No. Carolyn Anderson. Thank you. And I live here in the um, one child left in the district in the second grade. Uh, SRO is just an office that makes the teachers feel safer. I can't think of anything negative that happens in SRO. All the things that you listed. We have an SRO at our school, and it helps the kids work out their problems with bullying, so it doesn't have to go to the police, and it doesn't have to go. And believe me, you feel a lot safer when SRO is on campus. And you're, you know, sitting there, and you got two big boys fighting in your class. You can't do anything about it. You got to get on there. They're there, and, you know, one minute, and uh, they just want to be supported. That's it, because it works. Any other public comment? Hi, my name is Jackie Shaken. I've lived here since 1994. I have a daughter at Virginia Beach High School, and one at another high school. And I wasn't planning on speaking on this, um, but for my daughter that goes to Lucan Beach High School, I think she would be really encouraged to know that there's a resource there that will do something about the public drug use on campus that disturbs her greatly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further public comment? Four minutes of questions. Um, Miley, I, I just have a question on page three of the MOU. Firearm must we? Yes. Okay. By, by their policies, uh, something uh, uh, Chief Nice talked about, uh, uh, there's, it's part of their policy okay. and protocol. I just had to ask. It just, it 
this is me. And then, and then number six, uh, just that so not establish any set routines, which means I'm assuming one day at TOW, might be there two days, then down to the high school, Thurston, El Moro. Chief, you want to? Yes, well, and, and you're right. We talked about this and how we're going to navigate that. The, the Our concept or how we see it is that the SRO most likely start at the high school and they navigate throughout the schools throughout the day. And that's probably, and then what they're, what they're saying, what we're saying is it's not going to be predicted, um, but we're going to get guidance from the school district. So it might be TOW one day and, you know, uh, Thurston the next and then El Moro the third, and then they'll rotate throughout the school system, um, throughout the schools throughout the day, being there for lunch, maybe being open car doors in the morning. Okay. And also to address some of the comments that were made, uh, the MOU is operational in nature only, and there's no money exchange. Um, what we would like the opportunity to do is to get your approval to be embedded and woven into the fabric of the school system. And it would come from my full-time employee staff that would be here. And I already have a, um, a juvenile detective that's doing it part-time. But boy, if they could be here full-time and engage the students and work with the staff and lend that opportunity for mentorship guidance and mitigate before those issues become something bigger, that's what we're looking for. So do you see this then, you know, like we're talking about digital literacy and citizenship, et cetera, et cetera, that would all play, this would play into that as well. Right, so far, uh, uh, Corporal um, Corn, who's back there in the corner, um, he's already done, and with other staff have done some um, cyber uh, conversations with students. It's probably one of the most well hosted uh, coffee talk topics uh, I've been to where we invite the students in the room as well. Um, so we're just looking at ways to enhance the educational components and opportunities uh, while at the same time establishing those relationships. And so, uh, as Chief Arnold pointed out, uh, there's no cost. We already actually um, have a juvenile detective who has been assigned to the school uh, in the school district who uh, supports things on campus quite a bit. Um, this would just dedicate that, that full-time role, um, and that would then allow that officer to actually go and be part of uh, more of uh, our schools and things that are going on. So uh, we've talked to Chief and I a lot about opportunities for them to establish relationships because we know that um, you know we have 3,000 students but there are thousands and thousands of juveniles that come into our city from um, outside of our school district that they also interface with. Uh, so we're, we're hoping to find ways that our um, local police department can work with our local students to identify issues, concerns, whatever that may be. So and be that like initial the social emotional thing that would have right. been so. Right, trying to marry the two together because uh, often um, we are utilizing and resourcing with our school officials officers and, um, and uh, other providers in the area when it comes to social emotional issues or concerns that come up. So, yeah, and it's not an enforcement. The, the first hand is not enforcement. It's education. It's it's guidance. It's prevention. Intervention. It's all of those things. So it's not about going through backpacks and, like, and running right. the canine through the school. That is not the intention of it. Now, if something merits that, obviously that if that's what happens no matter what. If there's right. external campus or not. But that would be directed by the principal, correct? The principal would still be the lead at the school site. Absolutely. Because my concern is uh, Mr. Moore's comment about criminalizing behavior. I wouldn't want to do that. But right. I do want to foster positive relationships. Mm -hmm. I do support that idea that the SRO could be engaged, that the negative relationships that presently some families have with the police force and their, young, and their teenagers, possibly, that that could be eradicated as you're around at TOW, you're around at Elmora, that there's more cooperative partnership. Um, Absolutely. Okay. And they're willing to come up to the officer and they share something they wouldn't have before because they have that relationship and that trust mm -hmm. that they built throughout the school year. Is, is there special training? I read online that there's special training for it. There is. So there is a school resource officer association and there's school resource, resource officer courses that the resource officer will go to regarding the education code and, and everything that goes on. And obviously, we well know social issues change throughout mm -hmm. the school year. And so they can respond to that and know, you know where the line is drawn and where they can't cross that line. So absolutely, they will join to SRO um, courses as well as join the SRO association. Terrific. That sounded like a good idea. This last weekend, I happened to meet an SRO that had been a policeman, and he had transitioned to a fireman, but he was also a school board member, which is interesting. And so he kind of saw it all. And he, from, I had read some information similar to what the gentleman was talking about, but he kind of appeased all that, and it sounded like it had helped a whole lot. 
Yeah, so we, and when we, if, if it's approved um, and we have a selection process, um, I've already committed to Dr. Gloria that there will be two people on the um, selection panel for the interview from the school district. We want it to be the right fit. And the, and the officer that puts in for that position is really someone who is a mentor teacher and in, ingrained in who they are intrinsically as a person, not just a police officer. So I want you to be part of that selection. Would, would you be open to having a student on? We can discuss that. We can discuss that. That's something as, talk as about a possibility. Yeah. I'm absolutely open to the discussion. I mean, yes. And so if I'm reading this correctly, hearing it correctly, police officer is still a police officer, still enforcing the penal code. Right. Um, but not enforcing education code, not enforcing conduct. And I know there is training now through the SRO line, and I know SROs, right? Mm -hmm. um, but how do you, in that training and in the hiring, the distinction between, like Mr. Morgan said, there's, there are two kids having a fight, on the football field um, in practice, and if the SRO was the first one to respond to that, how do you distinguish that as kids are growing up and we have policies in place to deal with it's it's true. Like, that it would not become a criminal activity, is what you're saying? Yeah, it does not have to be. Now, I will tell you this. distinction? Yeah. Well, I, I think at that, that point in time, obviously, the, the, the resource officers uh, are not going to unilaterally work. Uh, on our campuses and just say basically this is what we're doing. Um, unless it's something, uh, an exigent circumstance exists. So in this instance, obviously you're going to have the administration involved, you're going to have, if it was the example that's provided, you know, you're going to have the, the coach and those that are involved sitting down saying, hey, you know, what do we want to do and how are we going to address this? So um, obviously we have our education code, you know, processes and procedures. Right. We have a lot of discretion in what we do um, and how we approach it, and we would utilize the resources that we have, as we always do, to determine what's appropriate in, in that particular situation. So, so that is not changing from what we no. do today. No. Okay. Okay. Um, secondly, the the redu the goal of reducing. Um, school related violence and criminal activity by juveniles. Um, in that, out of all of the criminal activity, oh, you know what? That was off the first one. Can you see this here? Reduce incidents of school violence. Sorry, that's what she started. Sorry. 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 And we will fill out with some sort of matrices so we can quantify you know, the success of the program and then tweak it as we move through it. And I would love to come back in a year from now and report back to all of you. These were the contacts. These were issues that were mitigated without any names to it or right, situations right. to it. And somehow quantify the success and also qualify it. I want to hear from the school teachers and from the school board. You know, that yes, we feel the culture is different. We do feel like it. there is a sounding board and something that we can go to to mitigate issues. Okay, but for school violence, what is the percentage of your department? What, what do you guys do for, for juvenile and school violence now? Like, is it... 20% of the crime you work on, 1% of the crime you work on, how much violence? And maybe I'm School or juvenile in specific? Well, I think it, it changes school. I think it's juvenile first and now it's just, just a school. But to reduce incidents of school violence, it's going to be school violence. The first page, the first page. Oh. It's a very low. If it, if to answer your question, it's very low. Um, but I will tell you this, the majority of what we do is we, we mitigate based on usually social media posts and things like that. Is that what that's referencing to? Oh. Okay, because when I look at the, right when I look at how safe kids feel, when I look at what where we actually do have a fist fight once or twice a year, it's not the car dump. Right, talk. right. Okay, totally. So I wasn't thinking of internet related. A lot of it videos. is caught well in advance and addressed beforehand. So that's the, that's our intent is all, as much as we possibly can. When uh, something rises to that level, you know, they see something safe or something, we receive that information. You know, we, we try to act on that. We try to address it before it becomes a problem on campus. And if you need the police force to do it, you can do that. Okay, so it's tied to that. Okay. And then, uh, because because we look at our when we look at the reports we get about our student population, it really is more as other kinds of vaping and drugs. You know, uh, our juveniles using substances, right? When we like them to not use right. illegal substances, um, and so it didn't address that. And so I thought that's gonna. For our community, that's a bigger issue than, than possibly hadn't thought about the cyber, the threat of violence on the cyber side. You guys figure out whether it's an actual or not. Um, 
Right. So, yeah. Some kids just do things that are they just they're not thinking. Right, right. So, and I think it's funny, or they think it's something else, right? right? But part of it, you get involved in that. Right. Okay. Understand that. And then, um, I'm trying to make sure that you haven't already answered it before I'm going to bring it forward. Uh, so, okay. And the interview, and you're a twin. And then, what about also in the. Um, and yeah, it talks about that you would not use any uh, force. You wouldn't get involved unless you were, if, if it was not a criminal activity, right? But unless you were asked by his principal staff or someone. So I can imagine up in high school, right? Someone's threatening to leave, or someone's really upset and they're using all kinds of emotionally dysregulated verbiage, but hasn't done anything criminal. It's not. It, I would hope that you would never be asked to use force. But if you're asked to use force, and what level of force, and I guess it's because that's what Mr. Moore's kind of worried about as well, is that would traumatize that student. Or would, right? Like they're socially, they're, they're upset, they're emotionally upset, and what they probably need is whoever they're connected with to help calm them. Correct. And I'm not saying that wouldn't be the SRO at some point with some kids, but at what level, because it talks about that you could use force, and then it talks about the various force that you were required to carry. What force would you use on a student who has not created a crime and is totally emotionally dysregulated? Like, what would you do? I mean, this is the de escalation techniques. And all of our officers are taught critical incident um, um, communications and de escalation techniques. But if someone is acting violent towards a teacher and physically assaulting them, then they're going to have to somehow lay hands on them and prevent them from doing that. But there's never the intention to, to use physical force in any manner that is not prescribed or that's dictated by the incident. We are trained in de-escalation techniques and um, de-escalation communication. So in that instance, to, to your way, so scenario, not not to, I mean, there, there is no force to be had from our student who has not committed a crime, who simply is in distress. Right. Uh, if, yeah. you know, if the student then turns and starts to do something uh, that is criminal in nature and is a threat to themselves or others, right. then then the weather scenario changes. So it's, it's so hard to, to provide this. I'm calling the police. Correct. Yeah. Right. right. And so it's really that they would only get involved with that level. I'm kind of saying, even, I mean, just, they could be working with their guys that be more in counseling. They're in distress, right? right? And the SRO is in that same similar space or whatever. Would the SRO enter that space if not asked? I guess that's what I'm saying. It's all dependent. I mean, there are some where they have relationships with that student already um, and have interfaced with that student outside. Re recall that I, our kids I, only go to school with us for a certain amount of time. They, right. they still see the officers outside of the regular school day quite often, um, and especially if they've had a call for service at their home or it may be because right. this behavior is, is happening outside. So there's a lot of times where those relationships have already happened uh, where they've established that and they have a rapport with that student. Um, and you know that's the intentionality behind kind of bringing a visible resource on the campus is to continue to have that presence to be able to support that student if that's a situation of distress. If it's not the right person at the right time, uh, I'm you know uh, I'm sure that that officer will take a step back. That if it's escalating, they know that as well. If it is, they will take a step back. Someone else can step in. We have that's the resources we have, and, and it really was. Just, uh, as the toolbox of folks that we already have on our campuses and social workers, and psychologists, and principals, well, and administrators. And, and truth be told, it's not, no offense, a motorcycle cop who's, you know, well, riding a motorcycle and I'm going to pull you over for illegal left turn. Not that that's ever happened to me, <laughs> but it really hasn't. <laughs> Speaking of other things. But, but these, these are trained mm -hmm. in, a, in a different fashion. These are officers who've been trained differently. They are going to think probably a bit differently than we are used to. I am law enforcement. It's, it's like going to the principal's office. It scares me, you know, but my son had a run in years and years ago. Bob Bellinger will tell you the story. It's awesome. It's hilarious. But your author, your detective did an, an excellent job of scaring the crap out of him in a good way. And I'm telling you, I appreciate, I, as a parent, I appreciated it. I, I appreciate what you all try to do, and I and I am. I, I just I just think sometimes we go get too far in the weeds rather than is this is this a piece that fits into our our um, overall plan of trying to support students with caring adults as often and in as many places as we can, and I think irrespective of the the uniform, these are caring adults that 
certain kids are going to respond to in a very positive way. Others, well, that's, that's why we have counselors. That's why we have psychologists. That's why we have, you know, we, there's just there's a lot of. I just think it's another piece. I just needed to hear. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Like, I just needed to hear. I just wanted. You didn't defend it because it wasn't. I totally. Was like, I, totally would, I just wanted to hear in good conscience of the thing we're both one and that's what right. we're saying. That's what I'm reading. I just wanted clarity. I get it. So, and then the, the last thing I have is really about um, there's stuff you talked about about confidential data um, and the, the students' information. And so, when the SRO is entering information, this is report to you, they're a police officer. Is that into your database? They're entering only if it is only if it is an official crime report. So, say they come to the school and they're reporting some sort of abuse at home or raw mandated reporters. That will be a crime report that we have to Absolutely. take. And that will be protected. And that would come to you guys. And it would protect for it, anyway, okay. And then, but they're not putting any information in our system. No. Okay. So they're really just no. they're kind of keeping notes. So they wouldn't be putting information. Yeah. In confirm it wasn't clear. In, it wasn't clear in there. Um, and then. I, I know there. I know. I know. This last one on the data, and then in the case of emergency, I totally understand what emergencies we would provide information, confidential information. Is there any other reason that you're perceiving that you would need that outside of those extreme emergencies? Is there any? They're not signing in. They're not logging in. They're not looking at student data. Like, like if they're. If it's pertinent information to a certain situation, then we talk about it. It's a name and address and phone number for a parent. I think we have access we to the You know, um, so to the extent. Well, there's certain data. That's why I'm trying to figure well, out. Well, it, it's dependent on, the, the, again, it's hard because of the what if story, but it, it's know. dependent on the situation, obviously. We, we, we as the administrators, hold the data, right. and we would determine, you know, if the request is appropriate, we would say, okay, yes, this is what we can provide about that. You know, yeah. Um, okay. Right. Same way we do it every other time. Okay. We need to know, right, right to know. Right. And, and in your in your scenario you provided, it would be verbal coaching. Uh, if, if someone is just acting up and, and you know showing that emotion, it's verbal coaching. Okay. Okay. That's, I just, because you went into great depth of mentioning, I've been felt lost to see what the power is. No problem. Yeah. And, then, and just to, to go back with good context, you know, this has been a conversation that um, actually Dr. Allman, when he first arrived, um, had interest in uh, establishing this dedicated role. He's not here tonight, but uh, one of the things that uh, I've appreciated about Dr. Allman is he spent a lot of time uh, this last fall um, uh, just kind of reviewing what is it here in Laguna compared to, you know, Dan Hills where he was prior, he had an SRO there, he had different resources, um, and realizing uh, when this opportunity came up, uh, his response to me was this, this would be a great resource to add to our, uh, our schools. We already, again, we have uh, Staff from the police department do regularly are at our school site supporting and doing that work, um, but a dedicated officer would be fantastic. Um, and there's a lot of great examples out there um, of great relationships. And uh, Dr. Alderman has, uh, has some great stories about the relationships he had with the, uh, his uh, SRO in uh, Dan Hills. I've got a lot of great stories about the resources I had when I was at Hotel Um and those are conversations that both Chief and I had around. There's great uh, examples in our local communities uh, of SROs, and we would expect and hope that the, they would establish themselves as a local kind of community of SROs. And I know that they do kind of reach out and chat with each other. We can continue to, to uh, encourage that. And the Chief and I talked talking to me a little bit about that as well. What are they saying? What are things are going on? Uh, almost like their own little special learning community for lack of a better term. So um, we're uh, hopeful that uh, you know, the board's support of of uh, entering into an MOU at some point soon here and then moving forward and hiring them or here, let them get their hiring. Selecting. So, selecting. Okay. And, uh, and would they sit on the community coalition? I'm sorry, would the SRO sit on the community coalition? They, well, they, they, I believe you already attend the meetings and they would continue to do that. But that, is it that individual that you would select for right. me? That's what I meant. Yeah. They would replace, if it's not the same person, they would replace that. Or go with. Or, or, or go with. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. And Kenna, contrary to what you said years ago, one of the kids' favorite officers was a great big motorcycle. <laughs> and Alex, who was always around, okay. sitting on his motorcycle, talking to kids, not at school, but outside around the community. So, so he was a very, very popular. Um, 
I said a few comments. Uh, you answered one of my questions, which was on uh, having a way to see if the goals or objectives were met, how they were met, if, you know, what we realized on that, because that wasn't really addressed in here. And I, at one point, I looked at desirable outcomes as, a, as opposed to concrete goals, because it's, you know, something that you can maybe I like that. define a little bit better. And actually, this is the start of your third year here, and we've been talking about this for a couple of years. So I want to just put that in, in context for um, Mr. Moore, because it's not it, it's not a knee jerk, certainly, and in one of the recent incidents, uh, it was um, a reflection on the fact that years ago we had an SRO, and it was Officer Rick Seepen, and he was at the high school only, and it was uh, before there were school safety issues. There were, those didn't exist at that time, hadn't done. Fortunately, they hadn't reached that point in society. But he was to build rapport with students and to try to foster a better understanding of the role of law enforcement and so the students would have a better feeling about the law enforcement in our community. He served, he came just a blue blazer, and uh, he was here every day, at, but just at the high school. And we were de desiring to continue that after the first year, and the city council said they would not fund it. So actually, it's been high, on hiatus for a long time. And that was even part of our discussion the last couple of years was that um, where the funding source would come from. And I believe that our police chief has um, fought for that. Mm -hmm. So the city council would allow the funding to take place. Um, let's see. I just wanted to also, in reference to, it just concerns me sometimes when, when we know I like what Sherry Morgan said, when there's things that someone out in the public doesn't know, because there was lots of conversation in this district after Columbine and after Sandy Hook, more so after Sandy Hook. We had many side meetings because our, our staff were quite concerned that the, that was such a, a horrific, tragic incident, and it was elementary. So we had a lot of meetings, and then out of that, we changed some of the procedures at our schools that I know El Moro changed the way that they, they put up more fences, more lock gates. It's access to the school is more limited. And then recently they have the Raptor system for check-in for parents. So there's an identification system. And it, so there has been a lot ongoing for a number of years. There are always conflicting opinions. On uh, I was at a meeting once where I know Mr. Dixon was there. And it was about how do we lock up top of the world. And there were folks that said, no, we don't want to lock up top of the world because this is more similar to what they have in Irvine, where the community uses that campus a lot in off hours on the weekends. They didn't want to lose that. So it's um, it's a tough issue. But I think that currently, it does help to meet a safety need because we have that need. But on other things over the years, we have we did try um, drug sniffing dogs. We did that, that didn't go over real well. So that was a, a, one, a one try. We also had a lot of conversation, you might have been missed it, on student drug testing. And so we, there was some that felt we should do that for our students, and it's to, just student athletes, and no, not just athletes, all students. And then what we ended up with is we have a voluntary program and not mandatory. But again, that's there's folks that want us to do mandatory, so it would help to eliminate the problem. And these are, these are ongoing problems. I think, as you indicated, kids make poor choices. and. I would say that we have a shared concern that we don't want to ruin someone's life over a, a, mm -hmm. a adolescent poor choice, but we certainly want it to be a learning a learning environment for them, and maybe that it redirects behavior. That if we we see kids grow up here, all of us see kids grow up here, and it's really and you know that parents are really really I would say for the most part really really doing the best they can. And when their kid starts to go off the rails, it's really, really painful. And so if we can bring in more resources and, and help to you know, support each other, I think that would be productive. Those are my comments. Oh, I just had one. I had one more that was on the lesson, preparing lesson plans. And I'm assuming that any lesson plans would be done in conjunction with yeah. school staff. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, our next information item is 2019-2020 uh, student instructional calendar. Ms. Thank you. So we have a brief uh, presentation. Um, we're presenting the uh, revisions that the board had directed us to make 
to the committee's recommendation um, at the June uh, 19th meeting. Um, so just to kind of recap what we've, the work we've done so far, um, over the last year, uh, our committee met to um, surface assumptions, review data, study the issue, and they developed a recommended calendar structure for the 2019-20 school year. On April 12th, uh, we presented that information to you at the study session where we also gathered public input. Um, and at that point, the board had directed us to conduct a survey um, of all, all parents, all staff, and students in grades six um, which we reviewed that survey information at the June 19th meeting. Um, and at that point, the board had provided us with direction to make some revisions to that calendar uh, to have school start on the following Monday uh, with the idea that that first semester would continue to end at winter break. Uh, so again, just to recap, the committee's priorities are really to finish that semester. These are kind of the top four. Uh, finish the semester at winter break, uh, have the Thanksgiving week off, finish the school year closer to completion of testing, and um, add additional non-student days to cut down on the use of substitutes and make sure that teachers have more time with students. Um, all of these priorities are fleshed out in more detail on the district website, which you've seen um, in the FAQ as well. Um, on the next slide, the top three factors that were identified in the survey results, um, for those who supported the committee's recommendation, it was at the semester ending at winter break, increased time for test preparation, and having the Monday and Tuesday of Thanksgiving week off. And for those who opposed the committee's recommendation, they noticed family, uh, noted family vacations, traffic, and empty beaches as kind of the top three factors out of those that were listed. The committee's recommendation, again, just to kind of recap the elements that were included in that, 180 school days, having a week off at Thanksgiving, three district-wide non-student days, one in October, one in January, one in March, uh, a week and a half earlier start on August 21st, having those first semester finals end before winter break, and the school year would end on June 11th. The revised uh, proposed calendar that we have included in your packet uh, still maintains the 180 school days, uh, but would result in no change to Thanksgiving week compared to current. So students would still attend on the Monday and Tuesday. Uh, it would reduce uh, the non-student days from three to two, so we would maintain one in January and one in March. Um, and it would, uh, we could start school that, um, during the 1920 year on August 26th, which is the Monday before Labor Day. Uh, finals would still end before winter break, and the school year would still end on June 11th. So, again, just for those who like a visual, um, this is the committee's recommendation. So you see the three non-student days uh, pointed out on the right-hand side. Uh, and August 21st start, um, the Thanksgiving week off. Uh, it has no numbers. It's grayed out. And then having the first semester, first semester ending at winter break. And then... Um, So this is uh, the revisions to that, uh, according to your board direction, to have us uh, look at a calendar that starts on the Monday after, Monday before Labor Day, Monday after the last proposed calendar. Uh, Thanksgiving week is the same as the current calendar, um, first semester, semester ending at winter break, and then the two non-student days. Uh, the board also asked us to look at what would it look like in future years. And so because the calendar cycles, um, this shows you the next four years. Um, the 1920 would start on August 26th, and then you'd see it go back here. It skips two days the first year because of the leap year. So you'll see that happen um, periodically. Um, but you can see it moves earlier as you go out. In order to have those 80 days, have a reasonable first semester, uh, length, uh, that's the direction it would, it would need to go. Still maintains 10 weeks uh, summer. Uh, just shifts the 10 weeks. Quick question on that slide. Uh, the start date represents ending before Christmas break, not the date that it takes. Correct. So before we have our discussion, please take public comment on this item. 
and I have the card submitted. If you wish to speak, you did not submit a card, they're on the table out in the front. Uh, right, we, after we as we see speakers for 20 minutes, we'll have to have a motion and approval by the board to continue the discussion. That's in our, our policy. Uh, we had we did that at the uh, special meeting on the June 19th. Our first speaker, Mark Hallow. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, my name is Mark Kello. Uh, I have two children. Uh, one uh, went through Laguna Beach School District, K through 12. I have a son at Thurston right now. Uh, I've seen your the newest proposed school calendar change online, and I'm totally opposed to it. I grew up in Cardinal Mar. I've lived in Laguna for many, many, many years, and I'm opposed to sending the kids back to school during the festivals. When the traffic is out of control in town, it's not safe for the kids. This whole thing is being driven by a minority at the high school. And the majority of the students are going to suffer from this. And the majority of the students are the kids in the two elementary schools and the junior high school. They're going to be stuck on the buses in traffic after school. It's going to take a much more time for them to get home. It's not safe. It's a safety issue for our kids, and it's all being driven by a minority at the high school. Um, there's a couple other factors that I'm really not happy about. Uh, Laguna Beach, we're not like everybody else. This is Laguna. It's a historic time for the kids. You're going to be ruining their school, their vacation time that they look forward to during the year. That's what it's all about. You're going to be losing a lot of money from the festivals, especially the pageant of the Masters. There's a lot of kids that work down there during the summer in the pageant. Some of them don't get home till 11.30 at night after they get the makeup off of them. I really can't see that happening during school time. Get up, go to the pageant, work, go to school, go to the pageant, come home at 11.30 and then go back to school. I'm totally opposed to this, 100%. Thank you. We ask you please to not applaud the speakers because we can use our title more effectively. The next speaker, Moya Mitchell. Good evening, everybody. My name is Moya Mitchell, and I have a daughter at Thurston, and I have a daughter at Elmora. Um, so there are many points that I'd like to make tonight, um, but I'd like to stay focused on a few that I saw as the most important ones um, based on my attendance at the last board meeting. Uh, first of all, some of the concerns raised by the committee regarding the high school are valid and can be understood by me, an educator of over 16 years, and many others. However, some of these issues can be simply addressed without a change being made to the school calendar. What I saw as one of the most credible reasons for ending the school year earlier had to do with seniors having their transcripts available for colleges by the end of June. The school that, um, at which I teach and other schools with a later finishing date have what's called a senior deadline. This is where seniors finish their work and finals a couple of weeks ahead of the rest of the school. This works seamlessly for others and could so for our high school as well. There was another issue concerning our students who participate in a career preparation program um, that's tied into the Capistrano Unified School District. Um, I realized, being a special educator, I realized the value in having these opportunities for our children. Um, however, I wonder, first of all, why doesn't our district provide these kinds of programs, um, especially with our sufficient funding and the supplementation of school power? Um, and also, I'm not sure how many years we've been working with the Capital Unified programs, but it's worked so far. Why can't it continue to work as is? Um, also, this uh, I might get some scoffing or eye rolling, but this academic break that we want to give our children during the holiday season I believe is unnecessary and a far-reaching reason for this big change. The culture that helicopter parenting is creating is being criticized consistently in current research, and this is an exact reasoning and a perfect example of why this catering to our children um, is not working. Our kids can handle way, way more than we give them credit for. Lastly, in reaction to the high school teachers who collectively support this calendar change, Many locals are wondering, 
how um, how many of them live in our district boundaries and could benefit from having their vacations aligned with their families outside of this district. I believe this is a question worth asking and is valuable data to ensure that the teacher's agenda is not superseding our community values. Um, and speaking of values, this is um, what many of us see is the heart of this calendar issue. This is about our community. I didn't grow up here, I too grew up in Corona Del Mar, but my husband grew up here in this community. And uh, this issue is about our community, it's about its history, and it's about its pride, which are priceless and irreplaceable. Um, and it's about upholding the arts, it's about upholding the festivals and our city's traditions. Please do the right thing for Laguna. Our kids are doing just fine because things are really, really good just as they are because of all of your hard work, because of all of the principal's hard work and the teacher's hard work. Thank you. John Honeycutt. and I am an English teacher on the high school campus and also the department chair for the English department. Um, I just have a couple things to add. I don't really need to tell anything more than what I provided at the previous study session, but I did get more input from our high school teachers. Um, and 46 out of the 50 support the calendar change. That's 92% of our teachers, of which only 26% are AP teachers. So it is not driven solely for AP purposes. Um, and just to address your question about the parents, uh, the teachers that are parents that have school-aged children, uh, most of our high school teachers, their children go to our schools because they are so wonderful. So um, there's no agenda there as far as um, they want to be aligned with their students in different districts because most of them, I believe most of them, I think only, I can think of only one family where their kids go to a different school. I also wanted to add that I talked to the teachers that teach semester courses because that was a concern uh, for those of us that teach year-long classes. Uh, the calendar change doesn't really matter. We have a shorter first semester, a longer second, so we can just kind of realign, you know, readjust our curriculum, so it's not a problem. But for those classes that are semester classes, uh, GSS and health, um, I did talk to those teachers, and they are willing to collab on a unit that they both can teach. So that is a, a compromise that they can make, uh, so the students don't miss out on any curriculum. Uh, the other one was Gov Econ, and I talked to Mr. Alvarez, who is very much in support of this calendar change. Um, and he said with the testing that they have in the spring, with the week that the seniors get out earlier, um, with AP testing, he loses so many days anyway, so it's not really that much of a difference. And he does a senior project after his AP testing that he can adjust um, to sort of work with those semesters. So it's not a problem for him at all. So I think ukulele would be fine. Um, I'm just going to laugh. My jokes are these things. <laughs> One person, thank you. Um, so I think those were the only things that I wanted to bring forward that were kind of new. It was new information. So thank you very much. Thank you. Jackie Shepkin. Hi, my name is Jackie Shepkin. I've lived here since 1994. I have three children. One is going to be a sophomore at the Beauty High School. Um, and I strongly support this proposal to start the school year earlier. I've written my, to the board already um, in that regard. Um, I have two high schoolers. One is here, one is at another high school that starts three weeks earlier. Um, I have had the opportunity to see firsthand the difference in their stress level over this last break, um, Christmas break. Um, the one in Laguna, by the way, is not taking a difficult schedule, and she's not a kid who's going to take a bunch of AP classes. Um, it's simply that we wanted to have family time, true family time and she could not turn off her brain. And it, it is very difficult to expect kids um, to um, ignore that. Um, and I'm actually proud of her that she doesn't because she cares about school. It's important to her and she wants to do well. So seeing one child has a very difficult schedule and how much fun we had on our vacation uh, in New York and visiting family, and the other one, very, very stressed. Uh, it, was, it was very eye-opening. Um, uh, in terms of um, a couple things that are in our control and not in our control, um, we don't control when the AP exams are administered, nor do we control with the school sports schedule. Um, and we're not an agrarian society anymore. Um, and we're still going to have summer. Um, and this is a week. 
I'm, I'm actually surprised there's such resistance because we're not looking at changing to, you know, a month earlier or three weeks earlier. We're talking about a week here. I think it's very reasonable. Um, and I, I don't think that we should put that on the kids. It's not their fault. And if they want to take AP classes, and again, my daughter at Laguna Beach High School probably won't, but those that do, good for them. I, I support them. And let's not try to make their life harder. Let's try to make it a little bit easier. Um, I think in our quest to be unique, I think sometimes, and I appreciate it. I love Laguna. I live, that's why I've lived here from, since 1994, with the exception of 2008 to 2012, when I lived on the East Coast. And I'm from the East Coast. And there's a reason I live here. Um, but I think sometimes we're a little myopic. And, um, and hey, if we win the lottery and my kids get to live here their whole life and never have to live in the real world where they have real responsibilities, good for them. But what I'm thinking is, is that it's not too much of an adjustment to ask them to come to school a week earlier. You just adjust. It's not a huge adjustment. And if they can't handle coming to school a week earlier, I have much bigger problems. I really do. Um, in terms of the arguments of the festival, so my daughter who goes to another high school, she worked at the festival last summer. She works at the festival this summer. Um, she worked a couple, she does sports, but she also just worked a couple evenings when she went back to school early. Um, I have to tell you, one, there's not a lot of high schoolers that work there. Two, it's pretty dead. It's pretty dead in the last two weeks, and I'm sure that they can give you the numbers. Um, in terms of traffic, I don't know about you all, but I think the June traffic here is absolutely horrendous now. It is lighter in the end of August. That's my personal assessment. It's not scientific, but in the last 25 years, that's what I've seen. I'm sure someone can give us numbers on that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sherry Morgan. attempt to change the calendar. Uh, my biggest opposition then was that it was done without due diligence, uh, the facts were misrepresented, and the stakeholder support just simply was not there. I respect and appreciate the process that our district leaders have done and taken the, and the voice that they've given the community this time around. I've seen a lot of questions about the makeup of the committee and, the, and who the parent representatives were and how the consensus was reached if there was such a large contingent that didn't support the change. The idea of forming a committee prior to presenting the idea to the stakeholders, I think, was a good, as the calendar does have many issues. The need for alignment of all four school calendars with four kids and four schools, trust me, it was a pain. Um, early releases, non-student days, conferences, teachers, uh, learning opportunities, etc. And while examining it, does it make sense to change the start date? Things have evolved. I certainly get it. I am one of the parent representatives that was sitting on this committee. I've respectfully stayed quiet about the results while the outpouring of opinion both in support and against this proposal of our school calendar continues. Those that know me probably are wondering, really? It's true. I'd like to clarify a couple things that I believe misrepresent how the results of the committee came about. The process allowed for the calendar priorities to be, to be identified and discussed at various points. They were voted on and the majority of the vote moved forward of the priority considerations that became the foundation for the calendar that was that is being considered today. What was presented to the board was the best solution that the majority agreed on as to the priorities that were considered and identified. It was never unanimous, and one could argue that if two parents, parents were on the committee, did our voice, votes count enough? Starting after Labor Day from the very beginning has had the support within the committee. And respectfully, I also have to wonder if the presence of our fabulous superintendent had any impact on the willingness to openly challenge the majority opinion. Personally, I commented on the consideration that needs to be taken on how the community will respond and how it will be presented and what is valued. While I ultimately agree on the, on the calendar as it was initially presented, I need to trust the process and our leadership in that they will continue to be the visionaries that needed to be resolved, that needed to resolve this unique issue in our unique district. Myopic, yes. On occasion, yes. A lot, sometimes, sure. Personally, I have two sons that are off to college that does start in August. My perspective is not personal, uh, but I do believe it's important to look at things from many perspectives. And while I respect the process thus far, if one of our issues is, is to support the kids' mental stress loads, I'm not sure that the solution has considered all of the things to look at. For example, if currently we have two weeks after the winter holiday, if we're concerned about the stress load over the holiday, what does that do to the fall, the fall semester? Right now, they're only going to have the three days for, for Veterans Day and the, three day, the five days at Thanksgiving. That's a heck of a fall semester, and now our house is pretty crazy. The Sunset League and Athletic
athletics starting two, or two weeks earlier than before. We play basketball, baseball, and swim. We have every break, spring semester, spring break, we have sports the whole time. Can I quickly finish? AP, Just a few seconds. Okay. AP classes currently have summer homework. We have several teachers that use the reverse classroom. Could we implement something like that? Seniors that miss out on recruit trips. Can we alter their calendar, not the entire district? Can we use our technology? We are a very advanced and forward-thinking district. To not be incorporating some of these solutions seems like we are thinking very small. With the brilliance of our, with our administration and the collaboration of our community, truly we can work on something more innovative than this. We get thousands and millions of dollars from our community. Is it fair to exclude them from the decision-making process? Is it fair to demand that they are the ones that follow our lead, or should we be working collaboratively? The current calendar has a two-week start date by the year 2023. That's two weeks before Labor Day. Two weeks before Labor Day. So maybe, while I don't disagree with that, demanding that the community forces the change, we need to look collaboratively. It is for the students, but the students benefit from the finances too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, and is it? Rodersheimer. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Jeff Rodersheimer. I have a student and uh, will be in fifth and eighth grade after Labor Day this year. Um, thank you for letting me speak. Five o'clock is tough, I will tell you. I work and getting here was uh, difficult at five, but thank you for the opportunity. I'm glad the officers have left. I did not speak in the canyon. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go through this quick to give other people time to talk. Um, I have 10 points I'm going to go through pretty quickly, no particular order. It's my top 10 list. Um, first, the, this is about the students. We're worried about the students. We're thinking about the students. We're thinking about, we should be thinking about current and future students. The people most responsible for our students are our parents. So we should be thinking about parents, uh, current and future parents. There are a lot of parents who are future parents that don't have kids in the schools. They're part of our community, they fund our schools, they support our schools, and they will have. So to the point made earlier, I'm surprised that we didn't involve more of the community, because the community is what supports these schools through our taxes and through our votes. Um, I'm also curious what changed from the last time. This was only four years ago or five years. It wasn't that long ago that this was already considered. Um, that was a surprise to me and others that I've talked to. Uh, this has been mentioned, but other schools have um, go after Labor Day. In fact, uh, many beach communities do it for the same reason that we do it, and they seem to be doing fine. In fact, Ohio, which is not a beach community, uh, I grew up there, I can testify to that, and other than some lakes, um, is trying to move back to start after Labor Day. I think you should look into that. Um, my daughter in her school was being kind of taught by her teacher why this calendar change was good. Um, I'm a little surprised that she is being taught that in middle school. That was surprising to me and to her. Um, let's remember AP is a for-profit company. Um, I also agree, why aren't we looking at getting seniors out earlier for orientation? I have a, a niece in Cleveland, remember I'm an Ohio guy originally, who does that. Uh, vacation, it says that there one word, it's for vacation. I did analysis this year. If we had to move our vacation, which we would, given the new dates, it would cost roughly $2,000 more for my family to go on the same vacation. Um, we talked about, I didn't talk about early, early release, but I, I think that you're already looking at non-student days, so that's good. And then lastly, focusing on the whole student um, will reduce stress. The whole student, not just their academic part of their life. And as I stated in my very first point, the people most responsible for the whole student are the parents. Um, so. Let's see here. Um, and I know we just invested. I think School Power funded some of this to look at the student stress level. I think we should look at those kind of surveys and how they differ from other schools that have implemented policies like this, because I bet you would see no change. And I think I'm almost the time, but I'll give it back to somebody else. Thank you. Colin Goddard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, hi, thanks for uh, holding this meeting this evening. Um, I have a uh, 19, almost 20 year old who just graduated two years ago. And uh, I have a daughter right now that's in middle school at Thurston, will be in eighth grade next year. Uh, he's obviously finished, but 
just to reference him in regards to this, I kind of ran by him. And it's funny because the trolleys have had this unintended consequence of basically having the city now deluged with more traffic than we've ever seen, and more foot traffic and more beach traffic and more trash all over the place. But it was funny, we were in the car the other day, and that South Laguna there was a car that was traveling south through uh, Three Arch at 100 miles an hour. And um, hit another car, which flipped that car upside down onto the embankment on the uh, east side of the highway. And uh, he's been obviously driving since he was 16 years old. And he's like, man, I just hate driving in the summer. So a lot of our high school students, so I'm just looking at it from that perspective, drive to school every day. And you say, well, why would they have to drive to school when you got buses and all that, right? Well, he was an athlete. So it's either that or what, catching an Uber home and a parent has to come pick their high schooler up. So he had to drive every day. And in the summer, he would have to drive to go play baseball, summer ball. So he was already losing some of his summer just for a high school activity in itself because he has to go practice baseball during the summer, right? But now you would subject all of these kids that have to drive to school every single day in the summer and fight the traffic of the yo-yos that don't know how to drive through the town of Laguna Beach. And so he just said, I can't stand driving during the summer. No way would I ever want to have to go back to school in August and miss Labor Day weekend. But more, I don't want to deal with just the traffic and the idiots that are on the road. So I don't think that that's being taken into consideration. And on top of the fact that I also think that it's unique to Laguna that we get to spend Labor Day at the end of summer and the beginning of ending of summer with our families instead of having the kids in school. And so I think a lot of those things are, I think are just being swept under the rug for, I'm not sure what the motivations are behind it because school year is going to be the same, same amount of time, except that you're starting it earlier. And it's, I don't think to the benefit of any of the students or any of the parents or families. So that's my two cents and I appreciate all their comments against this. Hi, good evening, and thank you for letting me have an opportunity to speak. Um, so I, I stand here a bit conflicted because I had something that I felt when I came in, and then I saw something that I did not know, and that kind of changes my position. Um, I had come to say thank you um, because you as a board had directed um, suggestions for revisions, um, and I saw that as a compromise, and maybe it's because we're in a country right now that is just so divisive, but I saw that as well. That's great. It isn't ultimately maybe what I would have preferred myself personally, but I, I applauded the fact that you were really working to, to try to compromise, because I really, I really feel that in these day and ages, that there shouldn't just be winners and then there's losers. I think as a community, especially a special community like Laguna, that coming together as a community and really trying to understand each other's points of view and trying to find a place in the middle was really important. So I was super thrilled about that. I wanted to come up and say that. And then I saw this page. And then I saw what happened. And I thought, it's a trick. I'm sorry, but that's how I felt. This was like, I, I was like, wow, this is awesome. And then I see, no, it's, it's, it's just, it's like throwing a bone in the first year, but really ultimately it, it doesn't end up being a compromise. And that was bothersome to me. Um, I, I'm a former employee of the Good Beach School District. I now currently am employed with Newport Mesa School District. I'm going into my fifth year. And uh, we start after Labor Day, and it is also something being considered in my district. Um, but already the pushback from parents and from teachers and nobody at my school, the, the elementary school I work in, there wasn't a single, I mean, it's already being pushed back so strongly that although it's not decided one way or another, it certainly, at least from a staff perspective, is not looking too much like it's going to get any weight. So I, I, there was a lady, I don't know if she's still here, but she, she spoke so eloquently, um, and I was super grateful to her. We are a community with a lot of funds and a lot of, you know, school power, like, wow. 
there has to be another way to be able to meet the needs. And I, I acknowledge them, that it's important. These AP kids do need more time. And, and I, I understand the whole giving them that brain break during Christmas as being a really important thing. I, I agree with all that. I would just like it if there was a way we could compromise and find a way to potentially meet those needs without just squashing everything else. And, and the gentleman that also said about the future parents in this community, I agree with that as well because if they're paying property taxes and whether they're parents yet or they're going to be parents, this affects them too. Thank you. Thank you. Can we need a motion to continue this? All favor? Aye. Opposed? Carolyn Anderson? Yeah, it's Anderson. Okay. <laughs> So, as a, um, my oldest child graduated from Lincoln Beach High School in 2006, and the youngest is in El Moro. And I went to the last meeting, and I was so disturbed about AP, 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 AP. I was just going to absolutely puke. The small percent of our students, which are juniors and seniors coming out of our district, that are taking the AP, and we want to do this whole calendar change when it's already doing well. And I thought about, well, where does the health and safety not come first? Already some of our kinder through eighth grade students are on the bus for sometimes 45 minutes. Do we need them to be stuck in summer traffic with no restroom in the August heat? My parental concerns are real. And it's absolutely shocked the movement of the high school teachers. So blindly trying to change our school calendar without thinking about the domino effect and hassle it will cause this town and our little ones. Another red flag to me is the disproportion of the fall and the spring semesters, 80 in one and 100 in another. This is approximately a whole month's difference. Four times five is 20. Why does one senior have one month less to pass econ than another? This is not educational equality. And I know the teachers are trying to do a curriculum that would fit for both, but those are two different subjects. And the stress of the kids, if you don't want kids to be stressed over Christmas, then don't give them homework. I teach high school myself, and every year I tell my kids no homework. And they're like, really? No, enjoy your Christmas. And I work in a district, and we end before Christmas, and I thought it would be less stressful, but it's not. Because you have so much always to prepare. Being a teacher is like being a parent. You have so much to prepare for, and we ended on the Friday, Christmas Eve is Saturday and Sunday the last two years, which is here, and you miss out on Christmas because you're too busy getting grades. You're too busy doing all the end of the semester stuff, and I just don't like it. Even though my child is in this district and I start in August, I don't need her to be on my same schedule because my schedule sucks. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> And the testing window, they just talk about AP, but the state testing window depends on the number of school days you're at. So depending on when you start, that's when your testing window is. And if you want to test later, then choose the end of the testing window. Monica Silva? Hello, thanks for this opportunity to speak about the calendar. Um, I had a list of things I wanted to say, and I knew that as soon as I said them, I would hear a parent who would answer my question. So I'm so grateful for the community I live in because of all of the thinkers in this town. I think I'm gonna stick with just one point and then turn my time over to somebody else, but I know that there's so much opposition because I'm personally for the calendar change. Um, I do have a high schooler coming up and then I have a, a middle schooler and I sat with my son and my daughter and talked to them and asked them what their opinion was. Um, I would adjust my schedule and my traffic time for whatever it was in their best interest. And my high schooler is in favor of having the semester end before Christmas goes on break because of the study he has to do after he comes back. Um, it, it Not just stressful, but it just doesn't make sense to him and, and, and his grade, so it's reflected in that. And so um, I hear all the points, and I think that they're all valid. And if the school board is, and the administration can answer them, 
while using our technology that we have because it's vast and the funds that we are given because our community is so fortunate, then we should look at that as well. But I have to oppose everybody who is against the calendar for reasons like vacations and beach and festivals, although I respect it very much. I would like to see more opposition with facts that back up instruction and how instructionally, how is this not good for our children? Um, because your job as a school board is to handle instruction and not worry about what we're doing as families. And, and we are here in this town for the district. It's always been that way. You know, Logan is one of the best districts, and I think it's because of their forward thinking, but also the demands that they put on their children and, and you know, the test scores that reflect that. And so I would like to always be ahead of the curve when it comes to education. I want to be proud that I'm part of a district that will um, put education kind of first. So that's, I think that's where I'm going to leave it. And I would be open to hear any parent that is against me, but also has some facts behind what they're saying when it comes to instruction, not festivals, beach, and um, vacations. Thank you. Jennifer Sweet. Hi, I'm Jennifer Sweet. Um, I was honored, also as Sherry, um, honored to be on the calendar committee. Um, I was there representing a, a classified employee. I'm an instructional assistant at Top of the World, but I'm also a parent. I have three sons. They've all graduated from Laguna Beach High School, went to Top of the World, Thurston, um, and the high school. My youngest just graduated in June. He's off to college. All three did wonderful and fabulous, and they didn't have to start before Labor Day. Um, it's been brought to my attention that, as a, part, a person on the calendar committee, that yes, there's a consensus that what was proposed was you know, agreed upon, definitely, but it doesn't mean that everyone on that committee wanted to implement that change. And I am one, I'm against the change, I really enjoy uh, being a part of our community and the traditions that we have and the uniqueness of Laguna Beach. And I think part of that is starting after Labor Day. I don't think we need to do that. 90% of our AP students get a three or better on their AP scores, not starting before Labor Day. Our students in our district, 88% of our, our third through eighth graders are proficient and above on their CAS tests. I think we're doing really, really well. I should be very proud of those scores. Is there room for improvement? Probably. But I don't think adding three more instructional days to the year is going to do it. So I appreciate the process. I think it was done really well. I learned a tremendous amount being on that committee, but I'm still not in favor of the change. So I just wanted to make it clear that not everyone on that committee was willing to start a board every day. So thank you. Those are the uh, finishes of the cards that I have. Does anyone else wishes to speak? A uh, public comment will do. Please come forward and say your name. Uh, hi, my name is Kevin Harrison, and I have three uh, sons that are going through the school district here. Um, so this is the first I've seen this kind of rollback. You know, I thought we were looking at 26, but I mean, when I look at this here, End of semester, December 16th, end of school year, June 8th. I just, it, it looks, you know, completely unnecessary to me and, you know, absurd, really, in my mind, sorry. Um, but my, my big question is, a lot of people are saying, hey, we're a unique community, why can't we be unique and start after Labor Day? But starting after Labor Day is not unique. I'm not sure why we're, this was even, we're having this conversation, the majority of school districts in the country start after Labor Day. The best schools back east, the best school districts in the Pacific Northwest and the mid-Atlantic states start after Labor Day. And if they can find a way to do it and still be some of the best schools in the country, I don't see why we can't do that. We can't sit down and do that. So I urge everyone to look at some of the school, other school calendars of some of the top districts um, all over the country that are starting after Labor Day and maybe model it after that because it just doesn't seem too difficult to me. Um, I want to make everyone aware that there's a petition out there that was just started that's against the calendar change. Um, and it's just started recently, it's gaining a lot of momentum. 
You know, so I, I just want everyone to know that there's a lot of people in this community that are against it, are passionately against it, and I'm just still kind of perplexed why, as a board, you would want to force uh, this change on such a small community when there are so many people in this community that are against it. Because I think it's just going to create a lot of disgruntled students, parents, uh, businesses, and, you know, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Oh, may, I, may I say something again? No. I can't. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak? Can I make another comment? No. 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 <laughs> 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 I'd like to say something. Okay. Anne Moriali, again, so against it. So a bad speaker. Um, I just like to say all kids are different. They will handle things differently. Some can handle having harder classes, some can't. Um, I don't think trying to eliminate or get rid of more stress is that big of a deal because that's how we learn in life. That's how we learn how to deal th with things. We learn time management by figuring out with our vacations, how we get our studying done. All of these things are good things. So I don't know why we feel like we can't have stressed out kids or they can't deal with stress, because they can. And the schedule's worked fine for most people. So I have a daughter who just started college. After Labor Day, they start. They have no Thanksgiving break, no spring break. She was home May 1st, great first year with minimal breaks. And she didn't lose her mind or anything. So. I'm more concerned about a lot of other things than when the semester ends or, you know, that we get out a little earlier in June. If you'll remember, like two weeks ago, we were in the fog when we would have been getting out. It would have been ridiculous. So, um, what was the other thing? Oh, of all the school calendars I looked at, not one of them had a ski week. So, if that vacation is okay, if we got to keep that, why isn't our end of August okay to keep for that? So I, this whole process drives me crazy too because we can't interact at all. And then you guys sit here and talk about it and then we can't interact at all. So I don't know if this is something that has to be done this way. or I mean, it's super frustrating and hard to communicate. So I do appreciate last time though, Keta and Jan being very open about how their minds weren't made up, because to us it all looked like this was some kind of a ploy. So um, I do appreciate that. And I also want to say the teachers, I know they're all well-meaning, do not know what's best for my kids. Nobody does. I don't know what's best for yours. The parents know that. So, and there's been some things that have happened in situations where teachers thought they knew what was best for my children, and it was not good. So, anyway, I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, it's Mary Jo Weinkorner, and I apologize. I came in late, so if someone's already brought this point up, my apologies. But um, one of the things my son has told me throughout his teen years, his biggest gripe is that adults don't listen to us. And I'm aware that the kids voted and that there was a majority that voted for the change. And I think that should be respected. And again, I don't know, maybe someone has brought that up already, but I think their voices need to be heard too. Any more speakers? So, I finished that part of receiving public input. Um, we'll start with any board comments, questions, other directions. Where 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 they go from here with this? I'll start. Sure. Um, for most of you know from the last meeting, I served on the calendar committee. Okay, for those of you who don't know. Um, I support the calendar, the original recommendation, and I sort the new one. And I first want to address the way this falls out 
is not anyone scheming against you. It's the way the calendar falls. Mm -hmm. For a semester to be 80 days of instruction, that's how it falls. It will rotate back to later in August, the way a calendar rotates. So it's not, no one's scheming against you. I want to be clear on that. That's the calendar. Um, I still say our mission is to serve our 3,000 students. They are who we serve, academic and social emotional. This is not just for AP students, this is for all our students. Our schools and our system does not operate in a vacuum. We don't just exist as Laguna Beach Unified, we bump up against other educational issues, community college, programs that our kids, a CTE program. So all those things we have to exist within that solar system. And that demands that we have to have some flexibility sometimes, that our uniqueness does not mandate that we just stick with what we do because we like to go to the beach that week. We have to look at what is best for our students. Our, also, our education system is not stagnant. Your child will not be in third grade forever. They will move through a system in which you will have different demands placed in every grade level, in every school. The semester, the semester break at winter is beneficial to all our middle schoolers and high schoolers. It is beneficial. They will have a true break. And the reason why there's 80 days and 100 days is if you ask the principals at high schools, the second semester is longer due to testing. You need to have a few soft weeks in there to schedule all kinds of testing, not just AP, but all kinds of state testing. Um, I also support, my biggest support is that winter break ends, the semester ends at winter break. I also think schools should get out earlier because a lot of our students are missing out on opportunities during the summer. This may only apply to high, sc high school students, but they matter. There's a thousand of them, and those four years are the biggest launch of their lives. I stick by that. I also support professional development days being designated for the entire district instead of parsed out so elementary has a day off, so I support that. We are not taking away your summer. We're scooting it around to best serve the needs of our students, social, emotional, and academic. Um, I also think that there's a lot of studies right now. We're going up to a training in Stanford that says how you arrange the instructional year matters for students, all students, that having that natural break is worthwhile. Our students support it. Our high school teachers who, let me tell you, invest in your kids and care about your kids um, support it. I personally support it as a board member, and I support it as a parent as well, and I have high school students. Those are my comments. I just have one uh, comment that um, I appreciate everyone's <coughs> input. The, the, I can't remember who was asking about the college and career advantage, the CCA, the ROP the classes. Um, the reason that we do have some classes on campus, we can only offer a few by, by having a joint powers agreement with Capistrano. We, we can offer our kids a myriad of opportunities, and they do have to go sometimes to other campuses, but um, we don't have enough students. We just don't. We just don't have the student population to be able to offer. And so that's why we. That's why we. we um, joined with, with capital and when they started later it was a problem but when they moved their calendar up significantly um it it, it, has, it has been a problem for our kids um they make we make it work the, the kids who want to take it in capital they take those classes they they just start earlier and then the, the ones on our campus they double up they just take they, the, the the actual class period is longer so that they get because they have a, a, a designated amount of time they have to so that's that. That's just a one clarification I wanted to make. And I agree. What's best instructional practice is what we need to think about. Uh, the PD days being aligned is good for everyone, students and families, because then you, you know you've got your, your middle school, high school. Because I was one of those people who had kids at all three schools for quite a number of years, and it was mayhem at my house. Um, Again, um, I look at that too <laughs> and get queasy, but um, I, I appreciate moving into August 26th, the first year. I, calendars do, they do move, they do rotate, they flow. It's just that I'm always bummed when Labor Day is September 1st. I'm like, damn, 
but it is. And then, you know, the next year it's August, it's September 8th or 7th or something. So, um, again, you just kind of, you just adjust, just like, just like we've always done. You just adjust. Um, this is a hard decision. This is hard. This is something that I do not, that I'm grappling with. I'm still grappling with it. Um, but I think ultimately, I have to listen to the professionals, and I part of why. Yeah, I'm listening to the professionals. I I think we have been given good information. I don't think anybody. I think we've been very transparent. Um, and that's that's it. Um, what I find are compelling issues. I are. Most of the classes at the community college start earlier, so our students can't take those classes. They don't get out early in June. But I'm interested in hearing more about the senior deadline, and if if the last week or two of school, the seniors, you know, have some options there, then I, there might be something we could do with that. I really like the idea of having a total break at the holiday time for students. But I'm looking at that calendar, and do we, I mean, do we always have to end on a Friday? I mean, does the end of the semester have to be December 16th? I mean, can it be? Reverse. It, it, you know, I mean, I know where my relatives go to school. It doesn't always end at the end, so you could start later in the summer and, you know, and later in December maybe, or I think there's some other things that we could possibly do with the calendar. For sure. I think the, the reality of the current um, is you know, we, we work in one calendar year at a time, right, at this point. That's simply what we, uh, the board direction was to provide kind of what a, a sketch of what it could potentially look like, and I think that's exactly right, what Right, but I, I think that's kind of important. And right. then I also wonder, what happened? I thought we had three non-student days now on this calendar. There's only two. two, 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 two so so what happened to that day? Twelve percent of that day in order to get to the eighty Starting days for the first semester. So it, you got two days back at the beginning, and then the non-student day. And then the non -student day. Mm -hmm. we'll take off the two days that were before okay. the first week. Okay. okay. So what if you went to the two days of Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. the, the, we did that. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. We can't. We they have to have Wednesday off unless it's part of a contract. It's a contract. Okay, so we can't change. So we'll just put. They put back that Monday, Tuesday, Thanksgiving, and then pull that PD day in October. So pull those three days off, so it's not so early. And why wasn't the PD day put into the spring? Well, because they're already there and they're meant to be on there too. But why would we be worried? Why did you be changed? Well, right now as it stands, we only have currently one PD. Um, in the year, it's just all set. Okay. Right now, our current calendar set up, right? We've got the, uh, the semester break, there's one then for uh, the secondary folks. Um, the interest of the committee was to obviously have an additional day. Um, as the teachers have an additional day, so we have less pullout. Mm -hmm. So the initial, uh, initial review was let's have one in October, let's have one in January as the semester breaks we traditionally do, and let's have one again. Not necessarily too far in spring because, as we know, as JPD, when there's only two months left of school, is a difficult time for professional development. Um, and okay. in, anyway, so um, so we pulled it off in that in that instance. Um, I can address your other question about the student. If you want me to do it now, or you want me to, I can do it later. Yeah. So the uh, the state requirements. Every state's a little different um, around requirements of instructional minutes, requirements of instructional days. Uh, we don't have any flexibility related to 180 school days for students in the state of California. Uh, they're mandated to attend the scope of a full school day. Uh, it's an ed code, it's very clear. So we wouldn't have an option to say you could come to school this day to do something like an activity. Um, you know, we are obligated by law to have them here for that duration of time. And the day, and then what constitutes a day is actually also an education code. It's 240 minutes. And wasn't it in 2015, 14, 15, we could have changed it to 175, but we didn't, so now we're obligated. No, uh, that was a temporary change only for budgetary purposes. Mm -hmm. Everybody's okay. back to 180 days. Okay. 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 That was okay. only during that uh, the time where, okay. where there was a... So do you think, uh, another thing, I, I, in an ideal world, to have those non-student professional development days is ideal, 
but is it more important to have the, the non-student days, or could we go back to you know, planning them specially, but having substitutes on those days so they weren't non-student days? The whole point was to keep teachers in the classroom. Yeah, exactly. so, right, but is that more important than... You know, but I mean, but the, the two PD things. days are now in the second semester, mm -hmm. which doesn't, the first day, it doesn't change the start. Yeah. But, it, but it, they could get out of there. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Well, and as the calendar change happens, which naturally the calendar changes, it could be on those years that even if we move, so we're not getting out the Friday before Christmas, but we're still getting two weeks, it could end up putting a PD day in there, right, and using the Monday mm -hmm. or the, the Monday or Tuesday when we get out. So that we still have the PD built in. This is the tightest year, and then you know, as in putting the 80 days in, right? And then it becomes more flexible and it'll get tight again. So it could be every so many, whether there's five, six, seven years, I guess it would be in the run. There'd be a couple, a couple of years where you don't have the PD day in the, in the fall, right? And you just have two in the spring, and the years when the rotates can work out. But the belief fall. is the PD day is a worthwhile investment, mm -hmm. so you have less subs. Parents have no, a day off, I, right? I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and then we can, yeah, and I'm just trying to look at some of right. the Right, okay. that's, and your question is, is correct. If, if we pulled two, uh, one, we'd have to negotiate them, because uh, currently already have one in like, uh, that they'd have to uh, deal with mm -hmm. it contract wise, but uh, it would simply reduce the end of the school year by two days. So, same with, I mean, adjusting holidays, as you mentioned, we've got a break. Uh, many of the uh, uh, different uh, districts throughout the United States have different ways that they slice and dice winter break. Um, you know. So I'm just thinking on, on instead of starting um, as early as whatever it is, August 27, 26, that and getting out, that's a tough one, it's number 20. That's why it's, it's easier to get out. out it's it's easier right. to do it with the December 16th. Right, right. 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 That, yeah, so you, I just look if you start if you start the twenty sixth or the yeah something August twenty sixth of twenty in twenty twenty two, you get out on the twenty seventh. Correct. December twenty seventh. That's December sixteenth. Yeah. So if you but change it to it's still just that one, you just got to get the just that one. Exactly. Then you have to then just adjust into the week that we would normally get off before Christmas. You're not getting off. You're still just getting off two days before Christmas. Try to work a PD day in there. Mm -hmm. You're playing your day on which day before Christmas, you know, before Christmas Eve, right? So it's, mm -hmm. um, which makes it tight again. But it I mean, the calendar movement makes mm -hmm. everything it's difficult. difficult. Sometimes That's we why just, we do it in right. 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 Yeah, so right. we're not right. looking at this all the way out. Yeah, the right. direction was for us to, to kind of look what like, if. Right, right. We took yeah. this structure exactly and extrapolated it, it out. That's yeah. all this is. This yeah. Yeah. So I was not a job recommendation. August 26th didn't look horrible to me one week early, right. but August yeah. 22nd really looks. Right. Well, and that's, that's why we yeah. bring it forward. So yeah. see it. Yeah. But of course, with the goal being 80 days in the first semester, right. 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 So, so the semester ends at winter break. And we have evidence that shows having that winter break yes. is all important. We're, and we're about to do so it. And Denise Pope, yeah, there's studies now arranging that instruction with you. It's important for all students. And that's what you guys are going to do. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. And I was going to bring that information, but I thought, well, we should go to it. So, so there's so much online that send us to the groups. Mm -hmm. I thought we needed to go to it and bring that to us. Yes. Yeah, and I know Katie's already seen a bunch of it in depth breaks. So I, I was catching up online. I could already read this for his committee for the information. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and so we're going to visit. And I think we'll come with a bunch of information for the next report of what we did. And then, and then my clarifying is just looking at sitting on the floor and like doing work online. But the, the traffic in June is greater now than the traffic in August. And in, in, in Laguna. So the information we have from the city traffic right. study that they conducted simply in August simply is August. when they conducted their traffic study. Uh, the results are on our website, our website, okay. and the city shared that information. What the city has done um, related to what they see as a traffic increase is trolleys have started um, earlier, uh, two weeks earlier than they traditionally have um, to address the flow and flow of traffic more recently. Okay. 
Um, and so the trolleys will often go there uh, with our school buses and other things nice. yeah, for the duration of that time period. But this, this year, this was a change for this year. Okay, so in general, when I hear, you know, we all, we all hear about safety. So the safety issues, it's more likely more dangerous in general. It feels like there's more people here. And the common says we want to kind of be here in August when there are less people here. So we have more people, and our kid, our buses now have AC, our buses now have seat belts. But there's, but there's more traffic happening with the trolleys. From, from, from the data we have from the, 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 the again, we have city representation on the committee. Right. That's, uh, and so. And I remember uh, hearing this when I looked the data, I didn't. It's on there as resource, and, uh, and they're also cutting back on the number of trolleys in August as the ridership drops significantly. Again, that was data that was shared. So. And then community college it is, I mean, it does start early, so it's like August when it starts. And so kids can do that. But the one that starts in June when it starts in school is too late. And that, that, uh, that becomes an issue because there are many kids who want to. That's, that's, that's bumping up against yeah. another system, yeah. Yeah. which our kids need to have access to. Yeah. Yeah. That's my big question. Yeah. 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 There we go. Pardon me? No, I covered it all. I look forward to going to a seminar. Right, which the timing is the opposite, right? Which we've gone and then we're here and then we can go. Hopefully, this work and we'll just move it to it. Well, I think out of the part of the idea of the revision was to. You know, some of the comments that were made at the study session was to find that there would actually be eight days gained of classroom instruction. And that, I think the revised schedule does do that with the five days um, before Labor Day, taking a, giving back the one professional development day and two days at Thanksgiving. So we would end up, because that was the criticism that if we were going to start at that time, eight days early, but only end up with four additional instructional days that was not that beneficial. So that's that adjustment works. I think the for me the interesting thing is because I I did not know until the committee met that there was this um, researched need of ending the semester before winter break. So that was new information to me, which I was learning from that and learning that, that for those involved in that, that was a, a priority. Then that became the, the number one priority on the committee, but it was also aligned with the increased classroom instruction, not just before the AP testing, and I think I said that at the study session, but all testing, because we do have a window. The window has some flex in it at the lower grades, but there still is a window. And so the teachers would have a chance to cover more material before the students are tested on it, other than having five more weeks of instruction after that. Then and it, uh, again, it's the smaller number of students, but the students who are in the AP classes, then when they finish, then as I mentioned with Mr. Alvarez and, and Governor Econ, he does a senior project because we still have students coming to school. And if people are looking at it physically, we also are paying teachers to teach for another four or five weeks after technically they have finished that course. Mm -hmm. And it, what troubles me is that it's really hard to find the balance. The balance is, do we go with the people that are adamantly opposed because we're basically ruining the culture of Laguna? And I hear that because I've been here a long time. And uh, do we balance, do we look at that and say, well, that's going to take precedence over maybe this is a smaller number of students, but their needs are really critical. Because when we're, when your kids do get to high school and they are in the different schedule, whether it's athletically impacted or AP impacted or both, that it is important to them and to their families that we provide the best opportunity for them. And what troubles me is you can't pick one over the other. That's why you know picking one of your children over the other because mm -hmm. they have needs. And it made me think back, and I I, mean, I see Jeff sitting back there. When your your perspective changes as your child grows, and you don't realize it's going to happen. But I know for I wanted to play football, right? And we were going to be gone for six weeks and had projects we were doing. So put him on the bus home from Idaho and his grandfather took care of him so he could, because they had six weeks of summer, of summer football. I would never have expected that and we tried to talk him out of it, but then what you end up doing is you don't talk your kids out of things when they decide they want to take a rigorous schedule of kids, kids take four AP classes. So we'd say, okay, parents, tell them that's too many. But that's not, that's not what it's about. It's about trying to help them achieve their, their goals. And so it's, there's a lot of adjustment. A change is really, really hard. 
I find that for myself, it's really, it's hard to look at this and it's hard to make a change. Uh, I don't, I, I try not to pull a lot of personal things in, but there were a few years that I was a festival exhibitor and it only ran six weeks. The world has changed drastically. The festival only was an art exhibit. It didn't have music. It didn't have entertainment. It didn't have cooking classes or demonstrations or a big wine area. It was just an art show. And I, I mean, it was a phenomenal privilege to me to be juried in, but it was, and I would, I mean, it's, it was just six weeks. So it's changed, they've added on because they had an audience to come. It is a business, it's not, it's not just an art show. It became, it became a business. And so we, you know, what, I think Kiara mentioned that one time. We would seriously maybe be looking at this if the festival wanted to close earlier. And I don't, I would not see that happening. I would see them deciding to open two weeks earlier because it is crowded here in June because of so many others around the country and around here being out, schools are out, and there are families visiting here. So I would see it, it instead of being eight weeks, it'll be 10 weeks. So I don't think we can can wait for that or, or count on that. But it's what I did notice, and I shared with Dr. Valoria, is our lifeguards, in an, in an answer to community members who contacted the city, they started putting lifeguards at certain beaches earlier because there were so many people there and the residents in those areas were really concerned with the safety of the visitors to the beaches. So we have kids who definitely work as lifeguards. They would have an opportunity to go to work earlier. It's again, it's really, it's hard for me, as Kenneth said, it's conflicting because there's a balance. You know, it's like who do you pick? And we really can't pick. But what, so I'll get to just what my one concern is. I'm concerned seeing those start dates because I had it in my mind, if we could pin it down to starting with five days before Labor Day, we could adjust to that and, and live with that. When it starts to go, you know, that, this yeah, that look at that, and this I'm not comfortable with that. So that's my biggest just comment for tonight. I don't know how we flesh that out <laughs> because I I got to start I got the Labor Day date for the next ten years, yeah. <laughs> and I looked at that and I thought, okay, sometimes Labor Day comes really late, so that's you know we can do this because we don't have to start that much earlier, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll just come to some time where we will only be starting like on August 31st. Then I look at that and say, obviously. I need to, uh, my higher math skills are really lacking. <laughs> yeah. I thought I worked it out too. It doesn't matter that. that. There was a, there, a few years back, we we got out on a Wednesday for mm -hmm. for right. uh, Christmas, right. or whatever. Right. 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 Yeah, yeah. We got out on right. Wednesday, and and however that worked, mm -hmm. you know. But I, I mean, that would be my hope. My hope, my hope would be that we could stay as close to. The August twenty sixth type date as possible. We're still getting our eighty days in for the first semester. Right. So we can bring back a couple. We uh, can bring back, I guess. Um, I mean, 20, you can. You don't but, but do we're only we're only informationing just 2019, 2020. Right. I mean, that's right. Of course. You, that's all you need. Cause so, so you can. So we have. Yeah. So the August report bringing that back. The one but day but day I don't want to do this. Anymore. No, and I would hope you yeah. no, but you can if, if you decide to start, as Jan said, if, if, we, if the goal is to start five days before Labor Day mm -hmm. and end the semester at, at the 80 days. So if you bump up on onto the 25th, you bump up on the, you know, okay, well, you, you've got some leeway there. But if the goal is to be as, to adhere as closely as possible to just the five days prior, then I would be very comfortable with you know that as an agreement, and again, understanding that you need flexibility, everyone needs flexibility. So that should, um, you know, they it, like I said, you, you get that you get that anomaly at Christmas, and it, it, that would be the 80th day. Okay, well then you're going to have to fiddle with that, right? That's okay. That I, but there has to be talks on both the right, yeah, yeah, right, on the right. August and, and, the, and the December. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, then, and another thing is that when we get out, though, because with the peak, the dual enrollment is important. And there's the dual enrollment through, the, right? Yes. And then there's the dual enrollment where you're doing that in the summer, you're continuing it. And there's only pieces that are right. taught then. Right. It's not like, so you can't well, that's just what we get to. Right. So that we can't, we also have to have them look at that date along with it. Those I think are good. I think so, but that's what I mean. But, but looking at that just to make sure it's right. adjust, it can, it can be pressure or right. put more pressure on. Right. Right. The dual enrollment piece is very important because it does, in fact, that, that does affect and it affects, and, well, it also affects our current.
current so, our current students because there are they are dual enrolled now yes in, in, in our but regular classes right. 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 yeah. right. yeah. but it's that, it's that, that is the, the, yeah. the visionary of it so we've been doing it i just want to make sure that we're when we're adjusting right. this time we're making sure we're looking at that state we're not we're not agreeing that so when, when we look at the calendar that's proposed, this one right here, amended for board, we're saying just this calendar, just this. Of, right, and that it, sort of inside it, we're saying we we like the configuration of being right. cautious about the August start, but we want the 80 days for winter exactly. break. I think that's yes. what we're yes. agreeing on. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. And that we do get out of school sooner in yes. June, so our so kids can, can take advantage, take, to take advantage of other things. Okay. Yes. And we would love to put the PD day back, but don't know how to do that. Well, we should make it. But the idea with the whole day, I really, yeah. I really would hope that we would come as close as to put it every year. You know, yeah. just yeah, like for, just after this over. last change, however, whenever that started, right. we start the Tuesday after Labor Day, and that's the same every year. Right. Right. So, so people can count. So I'm not really right. comfortable right. having so much but flex I, that we can't. I think there must be flex because the calendar changes. Well, I think we can figure out. We're trying to approve calendars more than one year out. That's why we have approved for this next fall. We did a couple of years ago. We're behind. We try to be years ahead. And so I think the. That he as long as it works on the flexibility, but I I know when I'm planning my schedule, if I'm gonna plan vacation for a kid in this school district, that I can look at it and go, Oh, it's gonna be the Tuesday after Labor Day. Right. I just can look at it. I don't have to go look at the website and figure out what day that is. I just know that's it. Tuesday after Labor Day. And I can make confident decisions, right? Right. And I think that's important for the community. And I think that's unique and new and the fact that we do this years in advance so people can go look and say, oh, we want to do a family reunion in 2023, or in 2023, right? We can go, they can go look and we would, not that we don't, but we don't, but well, it's not going to be that sad because you need to go backwards from, from Christmas break. Well, then we need to get an idea of what that looks like. Right. So, is that, so I guess uh, bringing back to the board another uh, information item of what that potentially could look like in the out years, I guess. Um, yeah. 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 How many years out is my question to you? Okay. Up to 23. 22, 23. I also like some more information on the on the senior deadline. I'm thinking that if if you're a senior and you're taking a class at the community college, maybe that last week of school, maybe that that no. there so you so just have to know you don't have any days. Oh, how, and how do they do it in the other side? Other, all I can speak is for education code for us is that it's a 240 minute requirement. The leeway simply says that a student can have less than 240 minutes or less than five classes to the duration that they're enrolled in an ROPCCA class, um, second semester of their senior year, shortening their school year and having to go enroll somewhere else. We would not have uh, an entire school year. And so our audit would show that our seniors are not fulfilling the entire Or that year. some of our seniors. Correct, we don't have that flexibility. So, like the, the students that go to, um, what's it called, boys camp? Boys state. Boys, boys state. state. They, they miss school, but that we count that, or we don't? So, it depends. So, there are some instances where a student who might, we know, might be leaving early to go to do college, or right. maybe they're competing in the Olympics, or whatever it might right. be, mm -hmm. right. and they're leaving five days early, we may work with them to have their, their students finish their finals early. If they're not a senior, there are some times where they come back and take their finals in the fall. Um, and have been complete until that point in time. So it, it's totally case by case basis depending on the number of students. But if you're talking about a, you know, an entire senior class or even a large portion of a senior class not fulfilling the duration of the 180 school days, um, that, yeah, it's not something we're capable of doing. Private schools have all authority to do whatever they want around that. And we couldn't have we couldn't have just the senior finals early. We do have them earlier because there's activities that they attend. They attend the activities. So on these dates, they would have to vote the other day. So my my question is this: Are we bringing back all information, or are we bringing back the 1920 as yes, action, the and then the future calendars as information? I think it's the next information. I the whole thing is information. information. And I would like to add it. Because as you go through the Labor Day rotation, focus, then it's still later on the 23-24 year, and then it swings back to being an early Labor Day in the fall 25. Or fall 24. But so if you could add one more, 23-24. Yeah. 
Then just can, we show swing, can we just show the swing coming back around then? So if they also, if they can see if that's that swing, okay. yeah, is, are you saying it swings back that year? Yes. Or it's just, okay. I guess it's okay. I think we can find something like this. Yes, yes. you can actually yes. see. Yes. That'd be, yes. Yes. Okay. yes, that'd be helpful. That's more helpful than that. I think. No changes to the current. So now this topic was specifically the board recommendation from the June meeting, which was the 1920 calendar. Good, so right? I think this is B. This is good. Yes. Extrapolate that out to right. yes. 23 to 24, or 24, 25, and then right. yes. to show when what, Labor Day rolls back. What and how tight it goes. So timing, uh, timing wise, the uh, meeting in August. Obviously, we only have one meeting, or is there an intention to have another uh, special meeting for this topic? Yes. Any other questions that I uh, anything you can look up? Can we, can we, can we, we have we have flexibility. I'm very comfortable with that. Oh, we'll do that. Can we be too soon by any other? This in terms of, I mean, with the festival of arts, so we're waiting um, for their information. yeah, we're waiting for information. They, um, I sent them a letter. They uh, uh, requested um, to go through some of the, the, the data together. So when I turn back, um, I believe uh, some point, yeah, point next week, um, I'll uh, be sending out uh, the request. So, so we might have some I might have some more information at that point. It's clear on some of the statements that are as well. Thank you. No, I do have one more comment, um, only from um, what Ms. Honeycutt and Ms. Morgan have said on the um, kind of the monumental piece. But in the goal of equity and with more kids wanting to take AP class or advanced and they want to learn more, and we want to encourage it so everyone does it. And the fact that some drop out of the summer homework when they're she was talking about how they could fix this semester one stuff, but, and then this morning they made a comment about the, the classes where you teach it also, where you put the information on and you're teaching it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, really. um, I'm not asking for you to ask the teachers anything, I'm not even there. But in the very area of um, more than really that summer work, that summer information, would there, would there be a potential where, I know some of them would get rid of stuff, they've already said that. But the potential for the ones who are like, no, they really need to have that. Would they do something where they got information online? Well, there was only uh, other you can't respondents. Do it, it's not in, but can you not do it outside of the 180 days? I guess that's what they can't give. If they're in summer, they can't really give them that ahead of time. And that's what my, you know what I mean? Like, you can't give them a class if you're not actually in session, can you? Well, in the instance, the, in the questions, because we surveyed the direction of the staff, you know, to right. determine you know, what was the uh, interest of the teachers who currently are offering a summer for asking students to do a summer assignment. Um, and it's outside of AP, it's not just AP. Right, and, well, the honors yes. assignments are completely different. Right. I mean, right. they're not predicated on a, a test room to that right. extent. So, um, uh, I think what uh, what was found was that those, there was two teachers who said, three teachers, I'm sorry, that said that they wouldn't make adjustments to their summer assignments. One of them doesn't have one, so it's the same two. Um, of the two that have one, um, one said the only way to sign is simply takes 24 hours, and the other one takes um, you know, five to six hours. So um, they determined that it wasn't as um, uh, large as some that were taking up to 20 hours. Right. So again, some of you have to also consider uh, for those folks to answer you know, the, confidently on what they would do, they have to know what it is that they're asking them to do. Right. So if the calendar shifts to, you know, they only have this many days of instruction prior to the AP test, they're going to have to backwards map that and say, okay, to be prepared, right. here's what we need to do. Um, I'd also like you to know, highlight, I know there's a lot of uh, information out there around, you know, top schools in the United States. And, um, the way that those are tallied, just so you all know as the board, is it's straight AP. Um, uh, you get on the list uh, through um, how well you graduate students. And so we always make the cut in terms of being uh, a group that is reviewed because we have an amazing high graduation rate, um, you know, and we do really well with our students who are disproportionate. So our, um, our low income students, our Hispanics, our Yale students, um, they outperform, um, especially with uh, peer districts um, in terms of that. However, when you get to college readiness, 
that statistic is solely based on advanced placement results for the most part. U.S. News would refer to Newsweek. Uh, what they look at is AP enrollment uh, to compare the total number of students in your senior class. So uh, a lot of the schools that are on those lists have 100% AP enrollment. Every single student takes an AP test. Um, uh, they've dropped in some rankings uh, uh, whether students pass or not. Um, they're able to do more for enrollment because they felt called very nice specifically a student taking the opportunity to enroll. So if you go look at some of those statistics, it's not apples to apples in terms of comparisons, simply because uh, a lot of those schools, they're magnet schools or they're enrolling schools, or you have to test in. Uh, Oxford, uh, like a local, uh, is a test in and a, and a GPA can remain in. Um, they're not, they are considered public schools, but they're not comparis comparable in that way. Um, but I know that's something that pops up because AP is often uses that indicator. I'm not saying that that's right or wrong, that's right. not a place of judgment, that's theirs. I personally, I'll tell you, I don't think it's the best judgment of whether schools do a nice job with kids, but right. mm -hmm. uh, that's the one metric that you decide to use. Um, but just understand that's kind of the metric that gets used, and so it's not always comparing apples to apples in many ways. So, um, when that pops up, I just want to know, it's still not the same. Okay, and the, and it's two years from post-data mm -hmm. as well, just so we're all clear. Right, it's right, like, it's not current data. Data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 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 And then didn't we, didn't we only hear back from 10 of our 22 or 18 making decisions? No, we heard back from all of them. So it was um, the honor student, the honors teachers are the ones that their response is their their curriculum is different. Mm -hmm. Usually, some readings, whatever it might be, and that's not you know they could adjust that at any given time. You know, uh, that's not dependent on any kind of assessment. So the AP teachers are the ones evaluating their curriculum, their scope and sequence to preparation. Well, I just thought we hadn't heard back from. No, we, we had uh, received responses from the vast majority of AP honors teachers at the school site. We must say that Dr. Holland had the whole list of her, but Okay. Any other? Any other? Any other? We'll close this item for tonight. I really appreciate everyone coming and sharing their opinions, uh, their passionate opinions with us. We do hear, hear that. I, I know I heard that frustration with the way the system is set up and the way the protocols and meetings are that we don't have dialogue, but I really. A, a long time of witnessing it. I don't know that we get anywhere if we have that kind of dialogue because we need, you know, we need to hear you and then you need to hear us and then the direction that we give and then what comes back the next time. It's still coming as an information item. I do have to say that I really uh, have respect for our community members who felt uh, comfortable enough in our environment to, to give their personal opinions and I, and I want you to to say that that is significant, that in, in our district, that's how we operate. That's part of the openness that we have, that you can be part of a group and you can recognize that the majority of the group moved it forward, but that it, you know you didn't necessarily agree. And that's, that is an important part of the process. We heard a lot of different things. I think Mrs. Border, if I, <laughs> we were very interested in Halloween and having the day after Halloween off. And that didn't make the top part of the list.
did those studies on preschool kids, and preschool kids who had had the whole child background by fourth grade were doing much better than the preschools that were all academically oriented. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They played with good. It was. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Plays and work. Motion, please. Um, second. Any discussion? The, the other thing they had on right there, too, it actually, actually didn't take a view. Okay. Well, it was that we need another verb for achieve, right? And it really was about how it had an AP and play and how um, it needs different things to different students and it needs different things to parents. And really, all those different pictures were gone. It was fascinating. I could spend an entire day on just one section on the website. So kids make videos and talk about it and how to get it done in schools and stuff like that. And, and, and teachers will break down their summer homework or write into a project and you know, find out 95% of the project really just ended up with tears. Yeah. Right? At home and frustration. So that wasn't a good project. And other projects were really successful and that went well. And the parent didn't do it. The kids owned it. And it's really interesting because these are projects done either that are in a post that are done either by a teacher with their students or students sharing. And it's fascinating. And different board policies that they suggest too, the students do. Not so, ourselves out of those. I was like, 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 some kids, well, just lots of tears. So for mom, there's lots of tears. <laughs> I didn't do it, I just cried a lot. Oh, you cried in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. It's like, oh my god, you're just on the leg off. Sorry, we can't. I'm sorry. We won't have a This is a great topic, right? Thank you. So I had, thank you. I had asked um, on the selection of student appearance, so if you could answer that question. Yeah, so we, uh, we believe uh, we have a uh, student. Dr. Alman's reaching out um, to uh, see if, well, I'm, I'm not sure if it's been vaccinated, but I won't get to say it. Right, you know, you know, know, it. But yeah, so we're looking at a parent. We also have a, um, a we believe that there's, the student and the parent would be actually a good um, to mother daughter combination. Um, uh, one, just for supervision uh, reasons. It would be good to have them yeah. there come along. But at the same time, um, you know, the, the, I think the donors and the uh, local parent will please go on to the school. So. Okay. And it wasn't for the, the particular person, it was just the matter that they they will be selecting and the yeah. selected one to say who wants to do this and who yeah. wants to do it. So right. we'll be after that. that's the kind of thing. Yeah, yes. You'll recognize the student for sure. Yeah. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries by vote. Uh, action item 18. Approval of independent contractor agreement with the Institute for Multisensory Education for a Comprehensive Court to Gillingham on-site training for up to 29 staff members to be held September 17th, 21st, 2018 in an amount not to exceed 30000 uh, Originally, the board has approved uh, a contract for staff to attend the, this training, which I think would be going on actually as we speak. Um, However, uh, we realized in terms of costs that it was uh, far more beneficial for us to uh, actually host it ourselves. Uh, we were able to actually get three times as many participants um, to host it ourselves. We're not thrilled with the timing. Uh, we will need to make uh, and address that with staff um, and our K-1 folks. Um, however, looking at it from a, a one a timing to getting more people trained to in this which we know is really really important mm -hmm. uh, this would have taken us essentially three summers to accomplish mm -hmm. so though in you know, again timing is not something we love about it but having it being done in the uh, 17th and 21st uh, you know, and it's not just k1 teachers we're talking our instructional aides who also work oh, into this uh, as well who are going to be trained we already have a few staff who have been training this, but we saw this as an opportunity to, to bring it in-house. Um, at that cost, it's actually a little less than, than 30, um, but we will take what we already budgeted in the uh, amount from conferences, and they've already rolled that forward 
uh, where the Lincoln has uh, Victoria Shore put them on Birch Shore and I'm not forwarded to this contract kind of stand. So there's, uh, it's not in addition to.
current ACT teachers are using. So that will also help kind of build up uh, the amount of materials that she has access to. Okay, so. And we'll be bringing it back in our future. Uh, one of the back to President Council off the pilot year to determine what else is out there, what might be better. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really glad that she's picking something that she feels comfortable with and that can meet her needs. Any other questions? Motion, second. Second. Uh, discussion. I, my only question that I had asked was on page 112, and this is a little bit about limit of liability and then the confidentiality. And I don't to do that because we're not sharing confidential information. And the other is, I guess, just the way it is in the tech world now that in case it, Anything's lost, or the systems break, if there's there's any liability. <laughs> I figured that would I just see Mike chuckling. I guess that's the state of the art, right? So I'll then it's plan it obsolescence immediately. Right. Uh, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries by vote. Action item 20, approval to contract with Timothy Smith to paint a mural at the Beach High School in an amount not to exceed 8000 I will take it unless Mr. Zeta would like to present it. No? Okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Asia. Um, staff is proposing um, a mural to be painted at the Newton Beach High School, and this came from, and I know Don's in the audience, but I believe it came from the No Place from Paint Initiative, and they're talking to Dr. Right. Holman and his staff. It was a great idea to showcase some of our extracurricular programs in an artistic way on a very large canvas adjacent to Short Street on the art building. Um, it's hard to see when you're not on the campus, but as you walk in, you can see it's very realistic. I believe there's a sample of our yeah. teacher board member. And it was also supported through Laguna College Art and Design with a donation and having some of their student helpers with, uh, help with the work. That's great. And with that, I'd be happy to take any questions. And I'll bring Brian up in case there's any. No, I'm just kidding. Just, uh, any public comments? Yeah, just to add, uh, the artist went into the APR class and um, collaborated with the students. So he kind of presented an idea to them and they talked about what would be good. So they came up with it together. So that was sort of the genesis of the mural. Yes, it's right outside my classroom. So <laughs> it's just automating the fire. And do you like it? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> any more questions? Um, I was lucky enough to talk to some of the AP art students about it and the collaboration. They were really excited. I know part of it, they were also doing some fundraising. They were selling little um, cards that they made. And I, uh, I don't know if they had other fundraisers, but I just wondered how much money was raised. A total of $1,000 came from LCAD and another $250 came from private donation. From, if that means people like me buying their stuff. It, I don't remember exactly what I was talking about. I bought a few coasters. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, all the people buying their stuff. I'm sure. Yeah. Any other questions? Motion? Second. Second. Discussion. Okay, I think it's in collaboration with LCAT. We do have great. some students who actually attend LCAT mm -hmm. and Omar is right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 A week ago Sunday, they were working on it, and it was really, really hot. So they are dedicated to the program. I'm anxious to see it without the scaffolding. Yeah, I think the the system. Yeah. Thank you for providing this. Of course. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries by vote. Action number 21 approval of one year extension of contract with Golden Star Technology Inc. GST for the procurement and installation of classroom TV monitors and equipment. Mr. Dixon. Yes, thank you, President Vickers. This is for GST to renew the bid that we had for, uh, done with them back in 2014. We can provide one annual year extension for four years, so it's the fourth. And it's in support of our audio visual equipment purchase and installation related to many of the four CLE classrooms. Public comment? Any questions? Motion? Blend is renewed for four years. Mm -hmm. uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries by vote. Uh, action number 22 approval contract with File Keepers LLC to perform document scanning, conversion, and shredding services per the unit cost fee schedule for an amount not to exceed $50,000 for the fiscal year 2018 19. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes
Uh, Biokeepers had acquired our former scanning and imaging company, American Microimaging Incorporated, AMI. We've been working with AMI for the past two years on digitizing all of our, or whatever documents we can, that includes site documents, warehouse documents, and much of the credit, even though I'm presenting it, should be going to Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is the same exact terms and conditions as we received with the RFP response. Nothing's changed. They've just changed their name um, to be part of the Biokeepers LLC family. Oh, they have to give you a report in August well, after we're done with the beauty warehouse event. <laughs> and you will know exactly what we've been. So this, what about cake? Oh, are we going to take a tour? Yeah, yeah cake and a tour. Yeah. <laughs> it's a huge event. It needs to be cake. We're going to get a crown. Yeah. 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 A crown yeah. made yeah. out of shredded. Yes. Yeah. 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 A veil. Yeah. 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 Public comment? It's been your board question. Sorry. Um, how how much more of this stuff do we have left oh. to <laughs> to do this huge event? You know, <laughs> it's tough. Um, yeah. Honestly, we'll all is it up. years? No, okay. no, we're getting really close. Um, okay. Not every department has been able to prioritize their documents yet. The student records are this close. Oh, to oh back to 1920, whatever. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh. So okay. those are almost all completely done. Um, our board stuff is almost all completely done. HR, termed employees, and insurance stuff, that's almost Great. all done. The next step is business with AP and payroll going in, and um, special ed's all organized. So everything's really, really close. It's, um, it's just a matter of time and organization. So we're ready. Right. And this will be an ongoing. Right. 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 So we had a whole lot to catch up on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a whole lot. Well, we keep making more stuff. Every year. <laughs> yeah. Every year. 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 Yes, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries by vote. Uh, item 23, board meeting requests. Items for future meetings, requests for information, or general comments. And I have a shoe, yes. I saw things. One, I wanted to share, um, but this was at Friday. And um, it was suicide prevention stuff. It's like, yeah. And, um, and part of it was the lock for your gun. I know I'm turning out when we're talking about the heritage too much. But the gun had lock for guns, and it talks about where you can go get locks and all that stuff. I thought it was really important. And I know Victoria, because you're a safe place too, so I only have one. one. So that's what we're going to share again. No, no, no. But I just thought it was a wonderful, yeah. they did a whole presentation yeah, it, and it was, yeah. And it was wonderful that you could talk to your from a pediatrician to doctor. There's a whole list of people talking to. To say, did I get a lock for that or right. that high part, whatever it was? It, right. And no, I didn't get a lock for medication. For medication, you could do that too. Like, it was a really interesting, but that's the thing that they gave me. So I just took what they gave me because the card I wanted for <laughs> to give it so I could share it. They gave me the lock. So, um, guys, it was, it was so important because um, it's such a, for such a, a smaller population, it's such a big thing in the population. You know, like one big sector pretty much. You know, the whole not food and stuff. So, and then um, I made, um, I have a copy, so part of in the MOU for the SRO was just about uh, the student records confidentiality for federal, which is player and small, and then you have the state level, and then this is um, done by our, um, uh, the German Council for uh, Orange County Department of Ed, and it just puts together what that means, and I know they referenced it a couple times, and so I didn't know what it meant, so I was looking for it meant, and Victoria obviously has the information, but I don't have any copies, but I did just want to read it or go back to the court. I should have handed it to you just in case you wanted. And then, um, in general, in, in a board policy, um, that we allow Mr. Moore to leave town on his vacation and not come and talk to us. There's actually, the ACLU has um, suggested board policy models for just work with this in general, whether it's SRO or not. And so, some model, and I thought we have. Potential board session coming up for a workshop for mm -hmm. policies, and if I wouldn't ask him to take time to look at her and have a lawyer without us talking about whether we all think it is. Sorry, I was going to 
who him. him. Yeah, who him. Or Mark, right, for them to look at something if we weren't all in agreement of them taking some time to look at what they saw you suggested on um, how to interact with this. And I think we do all that. I just kind of thought for the people who could be nervous, it could give them a sense of we have protocols in a board policy. And so, so, was, so that was my, before I ask, before they evaluate it, I kind of want to know like, where we all want them to spend time to follow the protocol. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't know if we want to. Do you have a copy of this, Victoria? She doesn't have it. I sent her the link. Oh, okay. she have it. Right. Were you saying that you would like us to read it and then bring it as a like a discussion item in our policy workshop? Because that's the way I'm interpreting it. I'm, I'm thinking well, whether we would need it the next week. Yeah, or the, would the next meeting come before the workshop? No, like it's it's the uh, can we do that? Should we look at it and then give comment then? Or do we have to ask you to look to see if we covered this already in any of our policies we have? This is what you're asking us to look at it and decide if we mm -hmm. want to have a district policy like right. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't be making that decision at the policy workshop. So yeah, I thought they thought there were options that would have to come after the next meeting. Okay. 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 Yeah, other people's angst to really reach out with angst, mm -hmm. right? So it's kind of good to bed, but it's a lot of policy. It's not in the it is. Okay. So are we comfortable with doing that? What, what do you yeah. What it is? Yeah, we can do it. Yeah. 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 I have the same hours as that. I was at not today. Um, so I think we're probably pretty set. We can just look at this because we should look at it and then decide. Right. Yeah, decide. Because we should have so much. Right, because right. right. we don't okay. have that sort of place. I was just down to the. That's good. We're already having a relationship with Barney. So, okay. right. and, I, I, what I can do in, in the meantime is also pull together any kind of the uh, policies that we may have that and then also address it and then address some of this information while it is. Yeah. 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 But I do appreciate your all's willingness to um, move slow. Be, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is. And so I just, I, just I, I truly, truly appreciate all the time you guys put in and the care that you that you use any time you do something. I just I mean that sincerely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much for this. I know one of the things that we're probably looking at knowing Lisa already is um, how teachers are going to react to this because at one of the workshops I went to they talked about how unprepared teachers or especially elementary to see somebody on campus with a gun. Yeah. Uh, so I went to the, the board leadership conference in, in San Francisco and it was really on four areas on um, what the board direction for boards on um, helping districts with STEM, with computer science, with school and safety and climate, and then with math and making sure that math placement is what it should be. We could only go to three. I didn't do the math one because a lot of it had to do with making sure, I had to choose something, um, making sure that disadvantaged children were getting what mm -hmm. they should, and I think we're trying really hard to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I, they did talk about, though, which I'm sure you're all already aware of, is in the first month of school, and I think they're talking mostly in middle school, you need to give a math test to make sure kids are placed in the right place and you're not keeping anybody back that should be filling that. Now, as far as um, one of the best things about it was getting to spend time with Mike Morrison and with Brian Poole. And, you know, Mike always has fabulous things to tell about what's coming up in the future with technology and things he's doing. And we're just so fortunate to have him. And then Brian helping the teachers with that and trying to balance not overwhelming them. Then, but a lot of it was about how boards can lead with this. And there were a lot of suggestions. It's, Luckily, 
we're doing lovely already. Like it's really important to have it in your bell cap, which we do because of the funding comes. Now for computer science, they um, I learned things that I didn't know before that only 10% of California high schools have an AP computer class. So we got one last year, so we're up in that 10%. Um, a lot of that 10% is up in the Bay Area. That 90% of parents want computers, but um, that want computer science in class, but very few will talk to the board members. So, um, and then there was a statistic, and now I don't, I didn't write that one on here, that a lot of board members, not us, that didn't see that as a prime importance. And that it should, there was a lot of talk about it should be um, as important as language arts and math. It's what's there. And we talked about what jobs are not going to be there anymore. I mean, we know jobs are changing rapidly. But we, like he said, don't have anybody going to radiology. Don't have anybody become a patent teacher. Of course, not a truck driver. But I'm a truck, so I'm not a cashier. So we went into what you shouldn't do besides what you should, but almost all jobs now have computer technology in them. And we went through all the farm jobs that have it attached to their tractors to know exactly how much of a fertilizer, moisture, fertilizer, moisture, moisture et cetera, to give each little square. Which are being set up right, to, right, get it, get it. And oh, um, then we talked about not as many girls going into computer science, although up to age 12, it's really equal. And then girls go away. And so one of the men who went there was a computer teacher, and he said, you know, I mean, that was true in his class, but he noticed some of the girls from his high school went on to major in, in computer science. So I talked to him, and he said, gosh, you didn't even take my class. And they said, I wasn't going to do that on my own. So they've done research, and they know you, one girl, Women are more social. Girls are more social. They don't want to be there by themselves. They don't want to be there with just one other girl. You have to, you, you need to encourage a group of girls to take it, and then they go. So that was good information for the computer people. We, we also talked about this great need, and at the college level, too, a lot of students want to major in computer science, and there aren't even enough um, professors at the college level. So what do you do? So they're um, looking at the CTE model, and many people now, if you come out of the technology field or you're something in that, you can get a CTE credential and you tell everyone to come to Orange County yeah, because yeah. we have it. And, be, and all you have to do, and you can do it concurrently, is take one education class online because they figure you know the computer science, you just don't, maybe not know how to teach. So. That's one of the ways they're trying to get more computer science out there. And then I talked to a bunch of board, I mean, a lot of it is talking to other board members and seeing what they're doing. But a lot of them in the Bay Area um, have people that go to a meeting once a month and then they go out and help the teachers in the schools and are assigned one day a week. So they're really, what I got out of it is so important to partner with community resources that you might not even know that are there. And, um, Guess what state is number one in COVID? Arkansas. Yes. <laughs> I can't look at my notes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not California. Yeah, they could. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, we're number one in STEM. Yeah, college graduates. Dean, when you're oh, talking about college. the parents that want computers, you're talking about computers, just not computer education. We're talking about, I'm talking about computer science, okay. not. Okay. I'm not. No, I'm not going to the keyboard we're maybe. We're past that. Yeah, yeah, way, way past that. Um, for the school safety and climate conditions, that that was really fascinating. Part of it, they said, it's really important for all schools to have their mental health plan in place. If you have a if you have a disaster, you just don't know. And that you used to think that okay, and I remember after the fires when I was teaching, and we had some counseling that first year. But the second year is even more important. There is more of a backlash the second year, and the third, perhaps even more. So to know that and have that in line. And then um, I was talking to the superintendent uh, from San Bernardino, Dr. Alejandro, 
and you probably know, they and another another board member, and they have task forces, one for health and welfare, and one for, um, I don't want to call it tragic. The board members serve on, they have students on, they have community, they have administrators. Like disaster? Like a disaster. And what they do, and you know, a fireman, a policeman, mm -hmm. and they meet every other month. And one of the things they do is they always have a, a table problem. So he gave an example of the one he, they were giving to the superintendent when they next met that he didn't know about. But this happened up in the Bay Area with all those Santa Rosa fires. An adjoining superintendent got a call 2 a.m. in the morning. Hey, your schools are being used for evacuation. We're sending a thousand people right now. Are you ready? And he said to the superintendent, okay, go. What are you going to do? So they give different situations just to get you ready in case. So you'll, you'll know what to do if something happens. Uh, um, then for the STEM, they Boy, hit us hard with all board members should really be networking with everybody you know. STEM opportunities and community partnerships that uh, it needs to be a core subject, like I said. Then we don't have, our district is small, so we can't have a special STEM school. So we have to look in other ways. But like Porterville has a special think lab where all seventh graders go to once a week. That's their STEM day. Um, talking about community partnerships in Riverside, um, they're partnering with UC Riverside and they're putting a, a campus on there, a STEM high school campus on UC Riverside. And they're, they're, then they're sharing some of their grad students, some of their professors. So people are doing a lot of really cool things. Um, the districts have girls STEM conferences. They're doing externships for their teachers in industry where their teachers can go out and still be paid but work for a little while in industry to, so they can bring back more practical application to the classroom. Uh, many districts have OST, out of school time, where whether it's uh, STEM in the summer, STEM after school, STEM on weekends, um, mother-daughter STEM projects, especially uh, Black Girls Code, that's one of the things they do because they really try to get women involved. And they talked about how important it is for girls to see women involved. If they don't, then they don't relate. And um, let's see, they talked about, oh, one thing I really liked at Franklin McKinley School District, they have brought in a lot of technology, but in their school culture survey, their kids went from 75 to 100% in rating themselves on perseverance in one year. And that was because they all the students there say, if, if I fail, even if it's on some really important goal, I'm not going to give up. And they've learned all that through all of their STEM. They said one of the biggest problems is changing <coughs> adults' mindsets, the teachers' mindsets. So work on that, then I know they give free training for any teacher that wants to teach computer science, whatever your background is. It can be English, it can be, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be math, in other words, history. Um, so code.org code does a nine-day class for any middle school or high school teacher. Elementary, it's only one day. But then they have follow-up online parts. And so I guess I came out one of the things I came out of it with is there's so many opportunities, but we can't hit people with too much at once. How do we support them at the same time and not bring them out? And then I looked at um, Southeast Bay District. Their teachers do an average of 80 hours of professional development. Another district- In a year? Yes. Another was 100 hours of professional development. Part of it being, um, you know, a, a workshop part of it was also college classes or online classes. But <coughs> it's, it's all, it was very interesting. I learned um, there's a younger group of school board members. They only want people under 40. 
and they feel like older people don't listen to them and they want to form, you know, a group to help each other. I mean, there were all kinds I of say go for it. different <laughs> things that, were, that people had that people had going on there. Then you'd have a person that was older from another district that was asking, "What are AP classes?" So you could go up. That's kind of <laughs> that's yeah. So odd. It was well, she was. I had talked with her. I went and talked to her because I couldn't. And she's from a district that only has 26 children. So oh, I'm sure they so don't have that. So so okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and then they gave me, and I'll share that maybe at another time, a lot of things that school board members can do. Is it, is it a form or? It's, it's not a form. form. It's not a form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, and then Jan and I went and um, visited some school. And we saw the dyslexia classes. And I was so impressed with how much direct teaching was going on. And I loved seeing the looking at the kids and seeing if they needed a break and saying, OK, bunch of jumping jacks. And some of the kids, mm -hmm. they didn't know how to do jumping jacks. But they jumped up and slapped their arms a few times and sat down. But really taking kids' needs into consideration. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. That is a jumping jack. <laughs> 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 You're qualified. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was tough. I read my kids. Yeah, we really appreciate it. I've been doing that. So um, I just want to say I stopped at the Coe's Gallery and was thanking her for collaborating with Bridget and allowing our students to visit there and how successful it's been. And because I just saw it when we were walking by there, it wasn't it really our appreciation for that. Okay. So good for the students to see their work showcase, mm -hmm. particularly on the opening nights. They get really, mm -hmm. really excited. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the work is good. It's good quality yes. work. And then I had shared with Dr. Moore, I read an article about neckties and men wearing neckties and reducing the blood flow to the brain. Did you that? Did you ask for that? For sorry. So. As I was spending my time on it, she was saying. So it's stuck. <laughs> if there's any truth to that, I mean, I would say that's that. that it really does. Hard yeah. to be. <laughs> well, the people in the <laughs> desert wanted to not have to wear suits, the board members, in the summer when it's 120. Oh, they should be happy with the class. Well, yes, they do. Anyway, so our next regular meeting is Tuesday, August 21st, here at 6 o'clock. I'm going to adjourn. So, second. Okay.